Story 1 It was a stormy night in the heart of Florida, the kind where the rain seems endless, and the thunder rolls across the sky like the drumming of ancient gods. I had fallen into a restless sleep, my dreams filled with the swirling chaos of the tempest outside. But it was not the storm that woke me, it was a knock. A slow, deliberate knock at my front door. At first I thought I had imagined it, a fragment of a dream lingering on the edge of reality, but then it came again, more insistent this time. I rose from my bed, a sense of unease wrapping around me like a shroud. No one should be out on a night like this, I thought. Yet the knocking persisted, drawing me inexorably towards the front door. As I approached, a flash of lightning illuminated the night, revealing the silhouette of my visitor through the frosted glass. It was large, too large to be human, with eyes that gleamed in the darkness like twin embers. My heart raced as I reached for the door, a part of me screaming to turn away, but curiosity propelled me forward. I opened the door to find myself face to face with an alligator, its massive form towering over me, rainwater cascading off its scaly back, its eyes fixed on mine, and for a moment time seemed to stand still. I could see intelligence in those ancient eyes, a knowing that went beyond animal instinct. The alligator raised one massive paw, and I realized it had been knocking on my door. But why? As if in answer, it turned its head slightly, directing my gaze towards the swollen river nearby, and then I understood. The storm had driven it from its home, and it had come seeking shelter. Guided by a compassion I didn't know I possessed, I stepped aside, allowing the creature to lumber into my home. It settled in a corner of the living room, a king in exile, and there it stayed until the storm passed. In the morning it left as quietly as it had come, disappearing back into the wilds from which it had emerged. I never told anyone about my nocturnal visitor. Who would believe me? But sometimes on stormy nights I find myself listening for that knock at the door, wondering if the alligator will return, seeking refuge once again. Story 2 Driving through the Everglades at night is an experience that can only be described as otherworldly. The dense fog that rises off the marshlands, the chorus of nocturnal creatures, and the endless expanse of wilderness create a backdrop for tales that few dare to tell. It was on such a night that I found myself navigating this labyrinth of nature, the beam of my headlights cutting through the mist like a beacon in the dark. My journey was one of necessity, not choice. A family emergency had called me away from the comfort of my home to the unpredictability of the road. The Everglades seemed to stretch on forever, and I was keenly aware of how alone I was. That's when I saw it an abandoned car, parked haphazardly on the side of the road, its windows fogged up as if it had been there for some time. Curiosity, mingled with a sense of duty, urged me to stop. I approached the vehicle, my flashlight piercing the darkness, revealing handprints smeared across the windows. They looked frantic, as if someone had been desperately trying to get out. Or perhaps, something had been trying to get in. The doors were unlocked, but the car was empty. No signs of a struggle, no belongings left behind, nothing but those haunting handprints and a sense of foreboding that chilled me to the bone. I scanned the surrounding wilderness, half expecting to see eyes peering back at me from the darkness, but there was nothing. Compelled by an urge I couldn't explain, I decided to investigate further. The trunk was locked, and with a growing sense of dread, I forced it open. Inside, I found nothing but an old, damp blanket and a child's toy, its colors faded by time and the elements. It was a stark, silent testimony to a story untold, a mystery forever lost in the depths of the Everglades. I left the scene as I found it, the abandoned car silent sentinel on the road, as I drove away, the fog seemed to close in behind me, as if erasing my presence, keeping its secrets once more. The experience haunted me, a constant reminder of the mysteries that lie hidden in the heart of the wilderness, waiting in the fog. Story 3 It was supposed to be a retreat, a solitary week spent along the less traveled shores of Florida's coast to clear my mind and reconnect with myself. The plan was simple, find a secluded beach, set up camp, and let the rhythm of the waves carry away the complexities of life. However, what I discovered beneath the moonlit sky was anything but simple. On the third night, as I wandered along the shore, my flashlight's beam caught something unusual partially buried in the sand. 
It was a chest, old and weathered by time, half concealed by the tide's whims. Curiosity, stronger than caution, drew me towards it. With effort I unearthed the chest, my heart racing with the possibilities of what it might contain. Pirate's treasure, ancient artifacts, or simply the belongings of a fellow beachcomber lost to time. The chest resisted my initial attempts to open it, its clasps corroded by salt and age. But persistence paid off, and with a final tug, the lid creaked open, revealing its secrets to the moonlight. Inside, wrapped in rotting cloth, were objects that my mind struggled to comprehend. There were figures carved from dark stone, their forms twisted and grotesque, depicting beings that seemed to blur the line between human and monstrous. Alongside these figures were metallic objects covered in symbols that I couldn't recognize, their purpose as mysterious as their origin. Feeling as though I had stumbled upon something not meant for the eyes of the modern world, I carefully removed each item, laying them out on the sand. The air seemed to thicken around me, charged with an unseen energy. It was then that I noticed a journal, its pages yellowed and brittle. I opened it, and in the dim light, I began to read. The journal belonged to a Spanish explorer from the 16th century, part of a fleet that had ventured into the uncharted waters of what would become Florida. The entries were a mix of daily logs and personal reflections, detailing the challenges of the expedition and the wonders and horrors they encountered. But it was the final entries that held my attention. The explorer wrote of discovering an ancient temple hidden within the dense mangroves, a place of power revered and feared by the local tribes. They spoke of artifacts of great power and a darkness that lurked within the temple, something ancient and malevolent. As I read, the wind picked up and the waves crashed louder, as if protesting the unearthing of the chest's contents. The explorer's last entry was a frantic warning, a plea to whoever found the journal to return the artifacts to the temple, to seal away the darkness they had unwittingly unleashed. I looked around, half expecting to see shadows moving at the edge of the light, but there was only the beach, the chest, and the artifacts spread out before me. The weight of the explorer's words settled on me, a burden of knowledge that I was unprepared to bear. I knew then that I couldn't simply walk away, that the task of returning these artifacts, of righting a centuries-old wrong, had fallen to me. But where was the temple? How could I find it, hidden as it was by time and nature? I resolved to seek out the temple, to follow the vague directions laid out in the explorer's journal. It was a journey that would take me deep into the heart of Florida's wilderness, beyond the safety of known paths, into a realm where the world seemed a distant memory. Story 4 With the journal as my guide, I began preparations at dawn. The task felt monumental, yet there was an undeniable pull towards the ancient, the unknown that lay hidden within Florida's lush landscapes. Gathering supplies and mustering all the courage I could, I set off into the heart of the wilderness, the chest's contents securely packed. The explorer's directions were cryptic, leading me through dense mangroves and untouched marshlands, where the sounds of civilization faded into the course of nature's untamed beauty. Days turned into nights, and each step seemed to take me further from the world I knew, deeper into a past that whispered from every shadow and rustle in the underbrush. I encountered wildlife, storms, and the relentless assault of the elements, each obstacle a test of my resolve. Yet the greatest challenge lay not in the physical journey, but in the creeping doubt that gnawed at my mind. Was I chasing ghosts, led by the ramblings of a long-dead explorer? Or was there truth to the tale, a darkness that needed to be contained? The answer came unexpectedly, on a day when the sun beat down with merciless intensity, and the air hung heavy with the promise of rain. I stumbled upon a clearing, where the trees seemed to recoil, and the ground was marked with stones arranged in patterns that spoke of deliberate, human hands. The air felt different here, charged with a palpable tension, as if the earth itself held its breath. At the clearing center was an entrance, a descent into darkness that matched the description in the explorer's journal. This was the temple, hidden from the world, a place of power and dread. With every step into the temple's depths, the air grew cooler, and the oppressive weight of the earth above seemed to press down with increased urgency. The passage was narrow, the walls adorned with carvings that mirrored the twisted figures from the chest. They depicted scenes of worship, sacrifice, and entities that defied explanation, their forms neither wholly human nor beast. The darkness was absolute, 
my flashlight a feeble defense against the enveloping shadows that seemed to move and shift with a life of their own. Finally, I reached a chamber, vast and circular, where the artifacts from the chest seemed to resonate, humming with an energy that vibrated through the air. At the chamber's center was an altar, and it was here that I understood my role. I was not just a messenger or a carrier, I was a participant in a ritual centuries in the making, a closing of the circle that had begun with the explorer's ill-fated journey. One by one, I placed the artifacts on the altar, each item finding its place as if drawn by an unseen force. The chamber responded, the air thickening, the carvings on the walls coming alive with ethereal light. The sense of an impending threshold being crossed grew with each moment until, with the placement of the last artifact, silence fell like a cloak, heavy and absolute. The journey back to the world I knew was a blur, a dreamlike procession through landscapes that no longer seemed as daunting or insurmountable. When I emerged from the wilderness, the weight of the experience was etched deep within me, a tale too fantastical for casual recounting, yet too real to dismiss as mere fantasy. In the years that followed, I often revisited that beach, that gateway to an adventure that had changed the course of my life. The chest was never found again, and the temple remained a secret hidden from the uninitiated. But the memory of that journey, of the darkness that had been sealed away once more, remained a constant reminder of the mysteries that lie just beyond the veil of the known world, waiting for those daring enough to seek them out. Story 5 I had always been drawn to the allure of history, the stories embedded within old walls and ancient halls, so when the opportunity arose to rent a historic mansion in Florida for my summer vacation, I didn't hesitate. The estate was a remnant of a bygone era, its architecture a testament to the opulence and grandeur of the early 20th century. Its history was rich, peppered with tales of prosperity, tragedy, and rumors of a hidden room that piqued my curiosity above all. The mansion welcomed me with open arms, its aura one of timeless elegance veiled in mystery. My days were spent exploring its many rooms, each telling a story of its own, and my nights delving into the mansion's past, unraveling the layers of history that seemed almost palpable in the air. It was during one such night, while perusing the library's extensive collection of diaries and journals from the mansion's previous inhabitants, that I stumbled upon a curious mention of a hidden room, a place of refuge and desperation. Intrigued, I embarked on a quest to find this elusive room. The mansion, however, kept its secrets well, offering no clues to the room's whereabouts. It was by sheer chance, or perhaps fate, that I discovered a peculiar mechanism hidden behind a bookshelf in the library. With a combination of curiosity and apprehension, I activated the mechanism, hearing the subtle clicks and whirs of ancient gears long unused. The bookshelf swung open, revealing a narrow passage that led to the hidden room. My heart raced as I stepped inside, the air heavy with dust and silence. The room was small, its walls covered in frantic, desperate messages scrawled in fading ink. Beware the shadows, one message warned. They whisper lies, read another. The desperation was palpable, a stark contrast to the mansion's otherwise serene atmosphere. As I delved deeper into the messages, I began to feel a creeping unease. The room felt isolated, not just from the mansion, but from the world itself, as if it existed in a realm of its own. The shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, whispering in hushed tones that were felt rather than heard. The more I read, the more I realized that the room had been a place of refuge for those tormented by unseen forces, a sanctuary that had become a prison. Determined to uncover the truth, I spent the following days researching the mansion's history, uncovering tales of a family torn apart by tragedy and madness. The hidden room had been the last refuge of the youngest daughter, a woman of keen intellect and sensitive disposition, who claimed to be tormented by voices that no one else could hear. Her messages on the walls were a testament to her battle with the unseen, a battle she ultimately lost. The realization hit me with chilling clarity. The mansion, for all its beauty and history, harbored a darkness that transcended time, a malevolent force that whispered from the shadows. I could feel its gaze upon me, hear its whispers at the edge of my consciousness, tempting, deceiving. I left the mansion the next day, unable to shake the feeling of being watched, of whispers that followed me even in the light of day. The mansion remains a beautiful enigma, its hidden room a silent witness to the unseen forces that dwell within its walls. Story 6 
The allure of abandoned places has always drawn me in, their silent stories whispering of a past long gone. That's how I found myself standing at the gates of what was once a bustling theme park in the heart of Florida, now reclaimed by nature and forgotten by time. The once vibrant colors faded to ghostly hues, the laughter and joy that filled the air now just echoes of memories. I had heard the legends, tales of the park's sudden closure, of the shadows that lingered long after the lights went out. My curiosity, a flame ignited by these stories, pushed me forward into the park's embrace. As I ventured deeper, the sound of my footsteps seemed too loud in the silence, an intrusion into a sanctuary of the past. The rides, twisted sculptures of steel and wood, stood sentinel, guardians of the quiet. It was surreal to walk amongst the relics of joy now so still, so silent. But as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of fire and night, that silence began to fracture. It started as a whisper, so faint I thought it nothing more than the wind's gentle caress. But then, laughter, soft and distant, as if carried on the breeze from days long past. I stopped, my heart a beat behind, listening. The sound was out of place, a dissonant note in the symphony of silence. It was coming from the direction of the carousel, a relic I had passed just moments before in silent repose. Turning back, I found the carousel alive, lights flickering to life in a hesitant dance, the painted horses moving in their eternal march. Music haunting in its melody, played from nowhere, a call to the ghosts of the past. I watched, rooted to the spot, as the carousel turned, a lone rider upon one of the horses, a shadowed figure that seemed both there and not. The laughter grew louder, a chorus of voices joining in, filling the air with a life that was absent from the park by day. The rides began to awaken one by one, lights flickering on in a cascade of illumination, machinery groaning to life, as if the park breathed once more. The ferris wheel turned, its cabin swaying gently, an unseen hand guiding its motion. The roller coaster roared to life, the sound of cars thundering along the track, screams of joy and terror mingling in the night air. I moved through the park, drawn by the spectacle, a witness to the impossible. The laughter and music followed me, always a step behind, as if the park itself was alive, aware of my presence. It was a celebration of what once was, a final show put on by the spirits of the park, clinging to the echoes of their past lives. But as quickly as it had begun, the energy began to wane, the lights dimmed, the laughter faded, and the music slowed to a mournful dirge. The rides came to a stop, the park returning to its slumber, the shadows receding back into the corners. I stood in the silence that followed, the weight of the experience pressing down upon me. Leaving the park, the gate closing with a finality that seemed to mark the end of an era, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had been given a rare glimpse into the past, a moment when the veil between then and now had thinned. The park, for a brief time, had come alive, not with the sounds of the living, but with the whispers of the abandoned. Story 7 In Florida, the ground beneath our feet is not always as solid as we believe. This truth became a terrifying reality one quiet evening in my suburban neighborhood, a place where the days were usually marked by the mundane routines of life. That tranquility was shattered when the earth itself turned against us, opening a chasm that defied understanding and brought forth nightmares from the deep. I remember the day had been particularly hot, the kind of oppressive heat that seems to press down on you, making the air thick and difficult to breathe. Evening brought no relief, only the heavy silence that precedes a storm. But the storm never came. Instead, there was a sound, a low rumble that grew in intensity, vibrating through the ground and into the very walls of our homes. Then, without warning, the earth opened up. It happened just down the street from where I lived, a sinkhole appearing as if the ground had suddenly turned to water, swallowing a house whole. The screams of the occupants, a family known to us all, pierced the evening air, a sound of pure terror that I will never forget. The neighborhood erupted into chaos, people pouring out of their homes to witness the unthinkable. Emergency services arrived, but there was little they could do. The sinkhole was a gaping maw, its depths hidden in shadow, the house and its screaming occupants consumed entirely. In the days that followed, 
The sinkhole became a grim fascination, a reminder of our vulnerability. Experts came to study the phenomenon, offering explanations about limestone and aquifers, about the hidden rivers that flowed beneath our feet. But their words did little to ease the sense of dread that had settled over the neighborhood. The ground that we trusted, the foundation of our lives, had betrayed us. The family was never recovered, their fate sealed within the Earth's depths. The sinkhole was eventually filled, the neighborhood physically restored but forever changed. Houses were sold, families moved away, and a silence settled over a street where the chasm had opened. But the ground in Florida is not always as solid as we believe. Sometimes in the quiet of the night, I can still hear the rumble, a whisper of the Earth shifting, a reminder of what lies just beneath the surface. And I wonder, with a chill that runs deep into my bones when the ground will open once more. Story 8 The allure of the ocean has always been a powerful draw for me, its mysteries veiled in the depths where sunlight dares not tread. It was this fascination that led me to scuba diving, to seek the secrets hidden beneath the waves off Florida's coast. Among these secrets was an old shipwreck, a relic from a bygone era, rumored to be a site of both historical treasure and haunting tragedy. It was there, in the shadow of the past, that I encountered a mystery that defied all explanation. The day was perfect for diving, the sea calm and welcoming, the sky a clear blue canvas stretching endlessly above. As I descended into the depths, the world above faded away, replaced by the silent, surreal beauty of the underwater realm. The shipwreck lay before me, a skeleton of wood and metal, home now to coral and fish, a testament to nature's reclaiming power. I was not alone in my exploration, a group of sharks circled the wreck, their movements graceful and purposeful. It was not uncommon to see sharks around such sites, drawn by the promise of easy prey. Yet, as I watched, I realized they were not circling the wreck itself, but something within its confines, something that seemed out of place in the serene underwater landscape. Curiosity overcame caution, and I approached keeping a respectful distance from the sharks. What I saw within the circle of predators was a sight that chilled me to the bone, a figure that was unmistakably human-like, but grotesquely disfigured. It was tethered to the wreck, swaying gently in the current, its features obscured by the ravages of time and sea. The realization hit me with the force of a physical blow. This was no mere artifact of the ship's tragic end, but something else, something that did not belong in this world or the next. The sharks, sensing my presence, began to circle closer, their primal instincts awakened by the intrusion. I knew then that I had to leave, to return to the surface in the light of the sun. But the image of the disfigured figure haunted me, both in waking hours and in dreams. I sought answers, diving into the history of the shipwreck, talking to locals and experts alike. The more I learned, the deeper the mystery grew, tales of lost souls and curses, of a captain who had delved into dark arts in his quest for immortality. The truth of what I saw that day remains elusive, a shadow beneath the waves that whispers of things best left undiscovered. Yet the call of the ocean is strong, and I know that one day I will return to the depths to seek the answers that lie hidden in the dark waters off Florida's coast. Story 9 The early morning mist clung to the ground as I laced up my running shoes the pre-dawn silence a blanket over the world. My daily runs were my sanctuary, a time for peace and reflection away from the chaos of everyday life. The trail I chose that morning was more remote than my usual paths, a winding route through the dense Florida woodlands, where the sounds of civilization were replaced by the chorus of nature. As the sun began to rise, casting long shadows through the trees, I found my rhythm, the steady beat of my footsteps a meditative sound, it was then that I noticed the first message. Carved into the bark of a tree that marked the trail's edge, the message was simple, yet chilling turned back. I paused, the words a stark contrast to the beauty of the surrounding woods. Curiosity peaked, I continued, my eyes now scanning the trees for any other anomalies. The second message wasn't far ahead, carved with the same meticulous hand, not alone. The unease set and then, a prickling sensation at the back of my neck. The remote trail, once a place of solitude, now felt oppressive, the trees looming like silent watchers. Despite my better judgment, I pushed forward, drawn by a need to understand, to uncover the story hidden in these cryptic warnings. 
As the trail wound deeper into the woods, the messages became more frequent, each one more unsettling than the last. They watched no escape silence or suffer the words seemed to echo in the quiet of the forest, a sinister whisper carried on the breeze. It was when I found the clearing that the true nature of the trail's secret began to reveal itself. The ground was marked with symbols, none that I recognized, forming a circle around a central point. Inside the circle, the earth was disturbed, freshly turned soil that spoke of recent activity. The air felt charged here, the silence of the woods now oppressing weight. I realized then that the trail was not simply a path through the woods but a boundary, a line drawn between the known and something far more ancient and malevolent. The messages were not warnings but a guide, leading me to this place of power. The sound of movement snapped me out of my reverie, a rustling in the trees that surrounded the clearing. I was not alone. The watchers, the entities or spirits the messages had hinted at, were close. I could feel their gaze upon me, a tangible pressure that urged me to flee. I ran. The trail, once a place of peace, was now a labyrinth of fear, the messages a blur as I passed. When I finally emerged from the woods, the sun was high in the sky, the safety of daylight a stark contrast to the shadows I had left behind. The experience haunted me, the messages and the clearing a mystery that refused to be ignored. I returned to the trail in the days that followed, each visit uncovering more signs, more symbols that pointed to a truth hidden deep within the heart of the Florida woods. A cult, long since disbanded but whose rituals had left a mark on the land, a scar that had not yet healed. The more I uncovered, the more I realized the danger. The Watchers were guardians of a secret too terrible to be known, protectors of a threshold between worlds. My presence, my intrusion, had stirred something that had lain dormant, a darkness that began to seep into my life, shadows at the edge of vision, whispers in the silence of the night. I knew then that the trail was not meant for me or for any who walked it in ignorance. It was a path of warning, a remnant of something ancient and terrifying, a story that was not mine to tell. And so I write this as a caution, a tale of curiosity in the darkness it can uncover. The trail remains a winding path through the Florida woods, its secrets guarded by the messages carved into its trees. But beware, for not all mysteries are meant to be solved, and not all secrets are meant to be known. Story 10 the allure of the unknown has always been a potent force in my life, drawing me into its depths with the promise of secrets unveiled and mysteries solved. It was this insatiable curiosity that led me to the heart of the Florida swamps, a place where the line between land and water blurs, and where history is swallowed by the dense foliage and murky waters. I had heard stories of the swamp, tales whispered in the corners of local bars and written in the faded pages of old books. They spoke of a hidden burial ground, a place sacred to the indigenous people who once called these lands home. It was said to be cursed, protected by forces both ancient and powerful, a warning I foolishly chose to ignore. Armed with a map drawn from the fragmented memories of those old enough to remember and bold enough to speak, I ventured into the swamp. The journey was arduous, the swamp fighting my every step, as if it were aware of my intentions and sought to protect its secrets. After days of wandering, guided by the sun and the stars, I found it. The burial ground was a clearing in the swamp, the ground dry and the air still, a silence that was almost tangible. The graves were marked by stones, uncarved and worn smooth by time, each one a testament to a life that had been lived and lost in these lands. It was there, in that sacred space, that I made my mistake. Driven by a desire to understand, to connect with the history of this place, I disturbed the ground, breaking the compact between the living and the dead. The consequences of my actions were immediate, the air turning cold and a mist rising from the ground, the swamp itself reacting to the violation of its sacred trust. That night the swamp came alive with sounds that had no source, whispers in a language I did not understand and cries that echoed through the trees. The ground beneath my tent seemed to move the roots of the swamp's ancient trees reaching up as if to reclaim what was theirs. The days that followed were a nightmare. I was lost, the swamp transformed into a labyrinth that twisted and turned, always leading me back to the burial ground, 
Shadows flitted at the corner of my vision, and the ground was littered with the tracks of animals that left no trace. It was only when I accepted the gravity of my transgression and returned to the burial ground to offer my apologies and restore what I had disturbed that the swamp relented. Guided by an unseen hand, I found my way back to the world of the living, forever changed by my journey into the heart of the darkness. The experience left me with a deep respect for the mysteries that lie hidden in this world, a reminder that some secrets are meant to be kept, protected by forces beyond our understanding. The swamp remains, a guardian of the past, a place where the echoes of the buried resonate with the power of the ancient and the sacred. Story 11 The allure of a new beginning in a sun-drenched Florida town was irresistible. The house was perfect, an idyllic setting for what I hoped would be a fresh start. It was a quaint, somewhat aged property, but it radiated a certain charm that felt inviting, a stark contrast to the sterile apartment I had left behind in the city. The real estate agent had been eager to close the deal, glossing over the house's history with practiced ease. It was only after I moved in that I uncovered the truth. The previous occupants, a family of four, had vanished without a trace one summer evening. Neighbors spoke in hushed tones about the night it happened, how the house had been left in perfect order, dinner still warm on the table, as if they had stepped out for a moment, intending to return. But they never did. Their disappearance had been a local mystery, a story retold with varying degrees of speculation and superstition. The police had found no signs of foul play, no note, no indication of where they might have gone. It was as if the earth had swallowed them whole. Driven by a morbid curiosity and the human desire to solve a puzzle, I began to investigate. I combed through newspaper archives, spoke to neighbors, and even reached out to the family's distant relatives. Each piece of the puzzle only deepened the mystery, painting a picture of a happy, unremarkable family, their sudden absence a black hole in the fabric of the community. It was during a sleepless night, the oppressive Florida heat making the air thick and still, that I first heard the noises. It started as a faint sound, barely audible, over the hum of the ceiling fan. A chair scraping against the floor, the clink of dishes being set on a table. I rationalized it away as the house settling, the noises of an old structure groaning under its own weight. But the sounds persisted, night after night, always the same. The unmistakable noise of a family sitting down to dinner, the murmur of conversation, the laughter of children. Each night I would creep down the stairs, heart racing, only to find the dining room empty, the silence a stark contrast to the sounds that had filled the air moments before. It was on a particularly brave, or perhaps foolish night that I decided to confront the mystery head-on. I set the table, laid out plates, and cooked a simple meal. If the house or its unseen occupants wanted to relive their last evening, I would oblige them. Sitting at the head of the table, I waited. As the clock struck the hour, the atmosphere shifted. The air grew colder, and the sense of anticipation was palpable. And then they appeared not as ghosts or spectral visions, but as living, breathing people. The family, their appearances mirroring the photos I had seen, sat down at the table, engaging in quiet conversation, oblivious to my presence. I watched, a silent observer to this replay of their final evening. They were a portrait of domestic bliss, untouched by the shadow of their impending disappearance. As the meal came to an end, they stood, smiling at one another, and then faded away, the room once again empty. The encounters became a nightly ritual, a window into the past that I couldn't close. I delved deeper into my investigation, driven by a need to understand, to prevent their final departure. The more I learned, the more I realized that their disappearance was no ordinary event. It was tied to the house, to a moment frozen in time, a loop that replayed their last happy moments together. In my quest for answers, I uncovered an old diary, hidden within the walls during renovations. It belonged to the father, a record of his experiments with the occult, his attempts to breach the veil between worlds. His writings were the ramblings of a man obsessed, convinced he could protect his family from an unspecified threat by binding them to the house, to that moment of happiness. The realization was a chilling one. In his quest to save them, he had trapped them in a cycle of repetition, their spirits bound to the house, 
reliving their last evening over and over. The dinner, forever warm on the table, was their anchor, a symbol of the life they couldn't leave behind. Faced with the truth, I knew what had to be done. The cycle had to be broken, the family released from their eternal dinner. The process was complex, requiring rituals and incantations that I had never believed in before. But belief was no longer a question. I had seen too much, heard too much. The final night was a stormy one, the Florida sky live with lightning, as if the heavens themselves were watching. As I completed the ritual, the family appeared once more, their expressions one of confusion and fear. I spoke the words, my voice steady despite the turmoil inside. As the ritual reached its climax, the family's spirits began to shimmer, their forms becoming less substantial. They looked at each other, a silent understanding passing between them, and then at me. There was no anger, no accusation, only gratitude. And then, they were gone. The house fell silent, the oppressive atmosphere lifting as if a weight had been removed. The family's disappearance remained a mystery to those outside, but I knew the truth. They were free, released from the bindings that had held them to this world, to this house. I left Florida not long after, the house sold to new occupants unaware of its history. But the memories of those nights, of the family that had become a part of my life, stayed with me. In freeing them, I had found a purpose, a belief in things beyond the tangible. The house in Florida, with its unfinished dinner, remains a chapter in my life, a reminder of the mysteries that lie just beneath the surface, waiting for someone brave or foolish enough to uncover them. Story 12 In the sweltering heat of a Florida summer, the promise of adventure led me to the mouth of a cave, hidden away from the well-trodden paths of tourists and locals alike. The cave, according to fragmented tales told by the town's eldest inhabitants, was once the heart of numerous unexplained disappearances spanning decades. These stories, passed down through generations, spoke of a darkness that dwelled within, a malevolent force that lured the curious and the brave to their doom. My skepticism, armed with modern rationale, dismissed these tales as mere superstitions, remnants of a bygone era of myth and folklore. Yet, as I stood at the entrance, the cool air emanating from the cave's depths sent an undeniable shiver down my spine, a primal warning that this place was not to be taken lightly. Or equipped with little more than a flashlight and an insatiable curiosity, I ventured into the cave's maw. The transition from the oppressive heat outside to the chilling embrace of the cave was immediate, the air heavy with the scent of damp earth and ancient secrets. The light from my flashlight pierced the darkness, revealing a network of tunnels that snaked it deeper into the earth. It was in these winding passages that I found the first of the messages. Carved into the rock with meticulous care, the message was a simple symbol, one that I recognized from the town's folklore as a ward against evil. The sight of it, here in the darkness, was a stark reminder that the tales I had dismissed might hold a kernel of truth. Undeterred, driven by a mixture of defiance and curiosity, I pressed on, the beam of my flashlight uncovering more symbols, each one more complex and unsettling than the last. The deeper I went, the more the cave seemed to close in around me, the air growing colder, the silence more oppressive. It was then that I heard it a whisper, soft and insidious, as if the very walls were speaking to me. The sound was unintelligible, a language not meant for human ears, but its intent was clear. I was not welcome here. The messages became more frequent, a breadcrumb trail leading me to the heart of the cave. Each symbol seemed to pulse with an unseen energy, a warning or perhaps an invitation. It was impossible to tell. The cave's twists and turns disoriented me, a labyrinth designed to confuse and ensnare. Time lost meaning in the darkness, each step forward a journey into the unknown. Finally, I emerged into a cavern so vast that my flashlight could not reach the far walls. The air here was different, charged with a palpable tension that made every hair on my body stand on end. At the cavern's center stood an altar, made of stone and covered in the same cryptic symbols that had guided me here. Surrounding the altar were artifacts, each one radiating an aura of power and dread. It was then that the whisper returned, louder now, 
a chorus of voices that filled the cavern with their demand. They spoke of a pact, a binding agreement made with the darkness that dwelled within the cave. The town's prosperity, it seemed, was built upon a foundation of sacrifices, offerings made to appease whatever ancient entity called this place home. The messages were not warnings but a path, a way to fulfill the town's end of a bargain made long ago. The realization was a weight upon my chest, a burden of knowledge that I had never sought. I understood then that my presence here was no accident. I had been drawn to the cave, led by an unseen hand to this moment of revelation. The cave, the town, the disappearances, they were all connected, threads in a tapestry of darkness that I had unwittingly unraveled. As the voices reached a crescendo, the air vibrating with their power, I made my choice. I would not be a part of this cycle, this pack that fed on darkness and despair. With a resolve born of fear and defiance, I turned my back on the altar, on the voices and fled the cavern. The journey back was a blur, a panicked escape from the heart of darkness. When I finally emerged from the cave, the sunlight was a balm to my soul, the warmth a stark contrast to the cold dread that had enveloped me in the depths. I left the cave and its secrets behind, but the experience remained, a shadow that lingered at the edge of my thoughts. I could never bring myself to speak of what I found within the cave, the knowledge too heavy a burden to share. The town continued as it always had, unaware of the darkness that lurked beneath their feet, of the price paid for their peace and prosperity. But I knew, and the knowing was a prison from which there was no escape. Story 13 The move to a secluded home on the outskirts of the Florida Everglades was supposed to be a fresh start, a chance to escape the noise and chaos of city life. The house, nestled among towering cypress trees and overlooking a serene stretch of water, was a dream come true. That dream, however, quickly turned into a nightmare. It began with the first letter, found tucked beneath the front door one morning. The envelope was plain, the handwriting elegant yet ominous. Inside, a simple message the swamp sees all I dismissed it as a prank, a misguided attempt by a local to scare the new resident. But then, another letter arrived, and then another, each one more threatening than the last. You don't belong here, one read. Leave before it's too late, warned another. The letters became a daily occurrence, a constant reminder that my presence in this idyllic setting was not welcome. I installed security cameras, but they captured nothing, the letters appearing as if by magic each morning. The local police were sympathetic but offered little help. They spoke in hushed tones of old superstitions and legends tied to the Everglades, of spirits and forces that dwelled within the swamp, protectors of its secrets. Determined to confront my tormentor, I ventured into the swamp, the letters as my guide. The Everglades were a world apart, a labyrinth of water and vegetation, alive with the sounds of unseen creatures. The air was thick with humidity, the path forward obscured by hanging moss and dense undergrowth. It was easy to see how this place could inspire tales of the supernatural, its beauty veiled by an aura of mystery and danger. As I pushed deeper into the swamp, the messages from the letters echoed in my mind, a chilling soundtrack to my journey. The swamp sees all. You don't belong here. The warnings became more tangible with each step, the feeling of being watched, of being followed, growing stronger. That's when I found the first sign, a marker of sorts, hidden among the reeds. It was a small doll fashioned from sticks and moss, its eyes two gleaming pieces of coal. The sight of it sent a shiver down my spine, a primitive fear that I couldn't shake. More signs appeared as I continued, each one more disturbing than the last, leading me to a clearing deep within the swamp. There, surrounded by the ancient guardians of the swamp, stood a figure. Cloaked in the shadows, it was impossible to discern their features, but the intent was clear. This was the author of the letters, the keeper of the swamp's secrets. The air around us crackled with an unseen energy, a tension that spoke of old magic and older grudges. The figure spoke, their voice a whisper that seemed to come from the swamp itself. They spoke of the sacredness of this place, of the balance between man and nature, and of the consequences of that balance being disturbed. The letters were not threats but warnings, a plea to understand the importance of coexistence with the natural world. As they spoke, the pieces fell into place. The letters, 
The signs, the feeling of being watched were all part of the swamp's defense, a test to see if I could learn to respect and protect this unique ecosystem. The realization was a humbling one, a lesson learned not through words but through experience. The figure disappeared as quietly as they had appeared, leaving me alone in the clearing. I made my way back to the house, the swamp around me alive with the sounds of the night. The letters stopped after that day, the message delivered and received. I remained in the house on the edge of the Everglades, but my outlook had changed. I became a steward of the land, protecting and preserving the beauty and mystery of the swamp. The Everglades were no longer a backdrop to my life, but a vital part of it, a reminder of the delicate balance between humanity and the natural world. The experience taught me that some places hold secrets deeper than we can imagine, protected by forces we can barely comprehend. The letters from the Everglades were not just warnings, they were an invitation to become part of something greater, to respect and cherish the wildness that still exists in this world. Story 14 As Hurricane Eloise bore down on Florida, I prepared my home for the worst, unaware that the storm would reveal secrets far beyond the power of wind and rain. The news had warned of unprecedented strength, urging residents to seek shelter or evacuate. I chose to stay, my home a fortress against the elements, stocked with supplies to weather the storm. The hurricane made landfall under the cloak of night, a maelstrom of howling winds and torrential rain, the power grid succumbing within hours. Plunged into darkness, I listened to the fury of the storm, a primal force that spoke of nature's indomitable will. It was during the storm's peak, as I peered through the reinforced windows, that I first saw them figures moving in the floodwaters that had begun to rise around my home. At first I thought them debris or perhaps animals caught in the deluge, but as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, illuminated only by the frequent flashes of lightning, I realized they were humanoid, moving with purpose against the torrent, their forms too graceful, too deliberate. Panic set in. The realization that I was not alone in this storm. The figures seemed to take notice of my home, their movements becoming more focused, converging towards me. I retreated from the window, seeking the false comfort of distance. The power of the storm masked their approach, the sound of breaking glass and rushing water signaling their entry. I braced for a confrontation, only to find that these beings, these storm-born invaders, were not there to harm. They moved through my home with the fluidity of water itself, their forms barely discernible, a whisper of presence rather than solid beings. In the eye of the storm, as a sudden eerie calm settled over the world they spoke, not in words but in images and sensations that flooded my mind, a communication as elemental as the storm itself. They were guardians, spirits of the storm and flood, awakened by the hurricane's might to cleanse and renew to wash away the old and prepare for the new. Their presence in my home was not an invasion but a blessing, a chance to understand the cycle of destruction and creation that defined their existence. They showed me visions of the land's past, of storms that had shaped and reshaped the coast over centuries, of the transient nature of human endeavor against the timeless will of nature. As quickly as the calm came, it passed, the storm resuming its assault with renewed vigor. The figures disappeared into the floodwaters, leaving no trace behind but the memory of their visitation. The rest of the night passed in a blur, the storm eventually spending its fury and moving on, leaving behind a transformed landscape. In the aftermath, as the sun broke over a battered but still standing Florida, I ventured outside. The damage was extensive, the recovery would be long, but I felt a sense of peace amidst the destruction. The storm's secret revealed to me in that moment of connection, had changed my perspective, showing me the beauty and necessity of nature's cycles. The figures in the floodwaters remained a mystery to the world, a story untold except in the whispers of those who had experienced the storm's true power. But to me they were a reminder of the deeper connections that bind us to this world, of the spirits that dwell in the heart of the storm, guardians of a balance far beyond our understanding. Story 15 Moving into the historic Florida home, nestled on the outskirts of a sleepy coastal town, was a dream come true. The sprawling estate, with its lush gardens and view of the marshlands, promised a peaceful retreat from the bustling city life I'd known. 
However, beneath the charm and tranquility, a dark secret lay buried, one that would unravel the very fabric of reality as I knew it. It started with the discovery of a small, rusted door in the cellar, hidden behind years of accumulated junk and dust. Curiosity, mingled with the thrill of uncovering forgotten parts of the house, propelled me to investigate further. The door was stubborn, its hinges protesting after years of neglect, but it eventually gave way, revealing a narrow staircase descending into darkness. The air grew colder as I ventured down, the beam from my flashlight revealing rough, earthen walls that suggested this passage was not part of the original house plans. At the bottom I found an extensive network of tunnels, their purpose and extent a mystery that sent shivers down my spine. The walls were lined with relics of a bygone era, items that hinted at a history much darker than the estate's genteel facade suggested. As I explored the labyrinthine tunnels, I stumbled upon a room that took my breath away. It was a shrine of sorts, with walls covered in old photographs and newspaper clippings, each detailing various gruesome events from the town's past. At the center of the room stood a table, upon which lay a series of diaries, their pages yellowed with age. The diaries belonged to the original owner of the estate, a figure shrouded in mystery and whispered rumors. As I poured over the entries, a chilling narrative unfolded. The tunnels had been used for something unspeakable, rituals that blurred the line between the material world and something far more sinister. The owner had been part of a secret society, one that sought knowledge and power through the exploration of dark arts and ancient, forbidden practices. With each page turned, the air in the room grew heavier, as if the very essence of the words was seeping into reality. I could feel a presence, watching from the shadows, a palpable sense of anticipation and hunger. The realization that I was not alone, that the tunnels might still be in use, struck me with a paralyzing fear. I left the room, intent on sealing the door and forgetting the tunnels ever existed. But the house, and whatever dwelled beneath it, had other plans. Strange occurrences began to happen, objects moving on their own, whispers in the dark, and an ever-present feeling of being watched. The town's history, it seemed, was not content to remain buried in those tunnels. Determined to uncover the truth, I delved deeper into the town's archives, uncovering a web of disappearances and tragedies that all led back to the estate. The secret society had not vanished but had simply retreated into the shadows, continuing their practices away from prying eyes. Armed with this knowledge, I faced a choice. Leave, abandoning the home and its secrets to the next unwitting owner, or confront the darkness, risking everything to expose the truth. My decision would set me on a path fraught with danger, challenging everything I believed about the world and myself. As I prepared to face the society and its ancient rituals, I knew one thing for certain. The house on the outskirts of town was more than just a home, it was a gateway to mysteries and horrors beyond comprehension, a focal point in a battle between light and darkness that had raged in silence for centuries. Story 16 The day was winding down to a gentle close, the sun dipping low over the horizon, painting the sky in hues of gold and crimson. The beach was quiet the usual throng of tourists and locals having retreated to their homes and hotels, leaving behind only the tranquil sound of waves caressing the shore. It was during these twilight hours that I found it, half buried in the sand, an old, weather-beaten camera, its lens fogged and body encrusted with salt. Curiosity, that most human of traits, spurred me to pick it up, to brush away the sand and examine this relic abandoned by the sea. The camera was old, a model from a decade ago, perhaps lost by a careless tourist or a local capturing memories. A small light blinked on its side, indicating to my surprise that it still had power. The temptation to see the world through another's eyes, to witness moments captured in time, was irresistible. I pressed play, the screen flickering to life, revealing the last recorded video. At first it showed nothing out of the ordinary the beach, waves rolling in, the laughter of children playing in the distance. But as the video continued, the camera panned towards the ocean, towards a disturbance in the water not far from the shore. What emerged from the depths was something that defied explanation, a creature of such immense size and alien form that my mind struggled to comprehend it. The figure on the screen moved with a grace that belied its monstrous appearance, 
tentacles or appendages reaching out towards the sky before it submerged once again, leaving behind only roiling water. The camera operator had captured it all, their breathing heavy, a whispered what in the world the only sound besides the ocean. The video ended abruptly, the screen going dark, leaving me standing on the beach, the camera in my hand, a chill running down my spine. Questions raced through my mind who had recorded this. What had they seen? And, most importantly, what had become of them? My initial impulse was to take the camera to the authorities, to share this evidence of the unknown. But hesitation held me back. The creature, if it could be called that, was unlike anything known to science or myth. Its appearance on the video could spark panic, draw unwanted attention to this quiet stretch of beach, or worse, attract those with less than noble intentions. The decision to delve deeper into the mystery was a turning point, the first step on a journey that would take me beyond the boundaries of known science and into the realm of ancient legends. The creature, I would learn, was known to the oldest residents of the town, spoken of in hushed tones and referred to only as the Abyssal. It was a guardian, they said, a protector of the deep, rarely seen but always present, watching over the waters that bordered our world in another, far more ancient and unfathomable. Armed with this knowledge, I returned to the beach night after night, camera in hand, hoping to catch another glimpse of the creature, to understand its purpose, its reason for revealing itself. What I discovered was a story not just of one encounter, but of a connection that spanned generations, of a pact made between the town and the depths, a balance maintained by the presence of the abyssal, the journey was not without its dangers. Others sought to uncover the secret, driven by greed or a desire for fame, threatening to disturb the delicate equilibrium that had been preserved for so long. It fell upon me, the accidental witness to this ancient secret, to protect it, to ensure that the abyssal remained undisturbed, a silent sentinel of the deep. As the story unfolds, the lines between observer and protector blur, the camera becoming both a tool and a symbol of the responsibility I had unwittingly assumed. The footage, locked away, becomes a testament to the incredible, a reminder of the wonders and horrors that lie just beyond the veil of our understanding, watched over by the abyssal, the enigmatic guardian of the deep. Story 17 In the dense canopy of a Florida forest, where the light filters through ancient trees and the air holds the promise of forgotten tales, I found myself lost. It wasn't just the path that eluded me, but a sense of time and place, as if the woods themselves had decided to keep me. It began as a simple hike, a journey to clear my mind and reconnect with the wild. But as the day wore on, and the trail twisted and turned in ways that didn't match my map, I stumbled upon something that rooted me to the spot in both awe and fear carved into the bark of a towering oak, hidden away as if meant only for the most observant of souls, was a series of symbols. Not just any markings, but ones that seemed ancient, deliberate, and imbued with an intent that I couldn't quite understand. My curiosity peaked, I followed these symbols, finding more as I went, each leading me deeper into the heart of the forest. The symbols led to a clearing, a space where the trees parted as if in reverence to what lay within. At the center, a stone altar, worn by time and covered in moss, yet unmistakably man-made. The air here was different charged, as if the earth itself breathed and whispered secrets long kept. Scattered around the altar were objects that seemed out of place. Out of time, small figurines made of wood and stone, offerings of fruit and flowers long since withered, and most unsettling, a collection of old, leather-bound books, their pages yellowed and writing faded. Compelled by an unexplainable urge, I opened one of the books, the leather creaking under my touch. The writings within were in a language I didn't recognize, filled with the same symbols that had led me here. But it was the drawings that caught my breath a depiction of ceremonies and rituals, of beings that belonged in myth, and of the altar, a conduit between worlds. I was so engrossed in the pages that the setting sun caught me by surprise. The forest, already a labyrinth in the light, became a shadowed maze as darkness fell, each rustle and crack a reminder of how far I had ventured from what I knew. The whispering seemed to grow louder, a chorus of voices that urged me to leave, to forget what I had seen. 
But how could I? The discovery of the altar in the books was no accident. It felt as if the forest itself had chosen me, pulling me from the path I knew into the unknown. The symbols, the altar, the ancient texts they spoke of a world that brushed against ours, where the boundaries thinned and the beings of old walked once more. The journey back was a blur, guided by the faint glow of my flashlight and the eerie feeling of being watched. When I finally emerged from the woods, the world seemed a different place, as if I had stepped through and back again, changed. I couldn't shake the experience, the sights and sounds of the clearing haunting my dreams. I returned to the forest, day after day, drawn by a need to understand, to learn. The symbols became my obsession, the language slowly revealing its secrets to me. And as I learned, the forest opened up, showing me wonders and horrors that existed in the shadowed places of the world. This was no longer just a story of getting lost in the woods, it was a journey into the unknown, a pact with the ancient forces that dwelled within. I had become a part of something much larger, a guardian of secrets that humanity was not meant to know, tasked with protecting the balance between our world and the whispers in the woods. Story 18 Inheriting the sprawling estate on the outskirts of a quiet Florida town felt like stepping into a novel. The property, left to me by an uncle I barely remembered, was a relic of a bygone era, its walls whispering tales of opulence and decline. With no other heirs, I was the unexpected beneficiary of what seemed a generous bequest. However, the true inheritance was not the land or the mansion that sat upon it, but the legacy of secrets and madness that had consumed its last occupant. My first few days on the estate were spent exploring, cataloging, and planning. The mansion was filled with artifacts from my uncle's life and travels, each room a testament to his eclectic tastes and interests. It was in the library, a vast room lined with books on every conceivable subject, that I found the tapes. Hidden behind a moving panel and invention that seemed more at home in a mystery novel were dozens of tapes in a player, each meticulously labeled with dates and times. Curiosity, coupled with an inexplicable sense of dread, drove me to watch them. The first few tapes were benign, documenting daily life on the estate, musings on philosophy, art, and nature. My uncle appeared as I remembered him a genial man with a keen intellect and a passion for the unknown. But as the dates progressed, a transformation occurred. The light in his eyes dimmed, his speech grew erratic, and his topics turned towards the obscure and esoteric. He spoke of the land the estate was built upon, of ancient forces and agreements made long before the foundation was laid. His research, detailed in books that no longer existed in any library, had led him to believe that the estate was a nexus, a point where the fabric of reality was thin, and things that dwelled beyond could seep through. Each tape became more disturbing, documenting not just his descent into obsession, but the physical manifestations of his madness. Objects moved of their own accord, shadows flickered at the edge of the frame, and sounds of whispers and cries filled the background. My uncle's final entries were frantic, a mixture of fear and exhilaration as he claimed to have broken through, to have made contact with what lay beyond. The last tape was different. The camera was stationary, pointed towards the grand entrance of the mansion. My uncle stood before it, speaking directly to the camera, directly to me. He warned of the responsibility I now carried, of the choices I would have to make. The tape ended with him walking out the door and into a night that seemed alive with unseen movement. I turned off the player, the silence of the library oppressive, the weight of my inheritance suddenly a tangible thing. The tapes were not just recordings, they were a legacy of knowledge and madness, a guide to the mysteries my uncle had uncovered and the dangers he had unleashed. In the days that followed, I was torn between disbelief and the undeniable evidence of the tapes. The estate, once a symbol of a new beginning, now felt like a trap, a place where the boundaries of reality were not as fixed as they should be. The decision to delve deeper into the mysteries my uncle had left behind was not an easy one. Armed with the tapes and a resolve to uncover the truth, I began my own investigation into the estate and its secrets. What I found was a world hidden within our own, a place where ancient packs governed the land and its inhabitants, and where my family's history was intertwined with forces beyond comprehension. As I unraveled the threads my uncle had left, 
the estate transformed from a house into a character in its own right, a keeper of secrets and a gateway to the unknown. My journey into the heart of its mystery was a path fraught with danger, where each discovery brought me closer to understanding and madness. The tapes, my inheritance, were not just a record of one man's descent into the abyss, but a map to navigating the thin places of the world, where the veil between the seen and unseen is lifted. My legacy was not the estate, but the knowledge and burden of guarding the threshold, of keeping the doorways closed and the shadows at bay. Story 19 Our Florida road trip was meant to be an adventure, a way to escape the routine, to discover hidden gems in the Sunshine State's less traveled roads. The plan was simple, follow the coast, avoid the highways, and let curiosity be our guide. It was on the third day, with the sun high and the promise of the unknown before us, that we found Shadow Creek, a town not marked on any of our maps or guides. The first sign that something was amiss was the silence. In a place that should have been bustling with the sounds of daily life, there was nothing but a pervasive, unsettling quiet. The streets were immaculate, the houses well kept, yet no one was in sight. It was as if the entire town was holding its breath, waiting. Curiosity turned to unease as we parked near what appeared to be the town center, a quaint square surrounded by small shops and cafes, all seemingly abandoned. Our footsteps echoed on the cobblestone, the sound too loud in the oppressive silence. It was then that we noticed the eyes, peering from behind closed curtains, watching us with an intensity that sent shivers down my spine. The decision to leave was unanimous, a silent agreement made under the watchful gaze of unseen observers. But as we returned to our car, we found our path blocked by a group of townspeople, materializing as if from thin air. Their expressions were blank, their eyes void of warmth, a palpable barrier to our departure. Their leader, a tall man with an air of authority, stepped forward. His words were polite, an invitation to stay, to enjoy the hospitality of Shadow Creek, but his tone left no room for refusal. It was an ultimatum disguised as courtesy, a command that brooked no argument. Trapped in a situation that defied logic, we followed the man to what he described as a guest house, a place we could rest and refresh. The building was older than the rest, its architecture a throwback to a bygone era, and it was here, behind its welcoming facade, that the true nature of Shadow Creek began to unfold. The guest house was a prison, our rooms luxurious but locked from the outside. As the hours passed, the truth became apparent. Shadow Creek was a town out of time, a place caught in a loop of its own making, its residents bound to a secret that anchored them to this spot away from the prying eyes of the outside world. Nightfall brought no relief, only a deepening of the town's mysteries. From our window, we watched as the townspeople gathered in the square, their movements synchronized in a ritual that was both fascinating and horrifying. The air vibrated with a power that was palpable, a dark energy that seemed to pulse from the ground itself. It was then, in the depth of despair, that help came from an unexpected source. A note slipped under our door, written by someone who claimed to be a friend, a guide to escaping Shadow Creek. The note spoke of a spell, a curse that bound the town and its people, a curse that could be broken if one dared to confront its source. Armed with this sliver of hope, we planned our escape, aware that the success of our endeavor hinged on the breaking of the town's curse. The confrontation that followed, in the heart of the ritual, was a test of wills, a battle against forces that defied understanding. Shadow Creek's secret was a mirror to the human soul, a reflection of desires and fears made manifest. The town was a keeper of truths best left unexplored, a guardian of doors that should remain closed. Our escape was not just a physical journey but a passage through the shadows of the heart, a reminder that some places, some secrets are not meant for the light of day. This narrative beginning sets the stage for a tale of mystery, entrapment, and the search for freedom, centered around the eerie, timeless town of Shadow Creek. Expanding this story to explore the depth of the town's curse, the nature of the ritual, and the protagonist's fight for escape would delve into themes of control, the human psyche, and the thin veil between normalcy and the supernatural. Crafting such a detailed and layered story within our interactions constraints poses a challenge, 
but this foundation invites imagination to explore the possibilities. If you wish to focus on a particular aspect of this story or take another direction, please let me know how you'd like to proceed. Story 20 The allure of the untamed Florida wilderness was irresistible to Alex, a seasoned camper seeking solitude away from the clamor of urban life. The chosen spot, deep within the confines of an ancient forest, promised peace beneath the expansive canopy, where sunlight filtered through leaves in dappled patterns, and the air was alive with the whispers of nature. Setting up camp as twilight descended, Alex felt the weight of the city's stresses begin to lift, replaced by an anticipation of nights under the stars and days exploring the untouched beauty of the wild. The first night passed in serene silence, a testament to the seclusion of the spot. However, as dawn broke on the second day, Alex discovered something unsettling. Carved into the trees surrounding the campsite were symbols, neither random nor natural. They were deliberate marks, etched deep into the bark, forming a circle around the site. Each symbol was unique, intricate, and to Alex's untrained eye, seemed to pulse with an unseen energy. Intrigued yet uneasy, Alex decided to document the symbols, sketching them in a notebook with the intention of researching their meaning upon return to civilization. The day passed with a sense of unease that grew with each passing hour, the forest no longer a place of refuge, but a realm of unanswered questions. That night, the forest's whispers grew louder, a cacophony of sounds that seemed almost communicative, as if the trees themselves were speaking. Sleep proved elusive with every rustle of leaves and snap of a twig igniting Alex's imagination with visions of what might be lurking just beyond the veil of darkness. Driven by a mix of fear and curiosity, Alex ventured out at dawn, the symbols now seemingly imbued with a more potent force in the dim light. Following them led to a clearing Alex had not encountered before, its center marked by a stone altar, ancient and covered in moss, upon which lay more symbols these matching the ones carved into the trees. The realization that the campsite had been chosen, not by chance but by design, was a chilling revelation. The symbols, the altar, and the clearing were all connected, part of a ritualistic boundary that Alex had unwittingly trespassed. The decision to leave was immediate, the solitude once sought now a source of palpable dread. Packing up the campsite with haste, Alex couldn't shake the feeling of being watched of being followed by unseen entities displeased with the intrusion. The journey back was marked by a sense of urgency, the once welcoming embrace of the forest now a maze of shadows and whispers. The symbols, once documented in curiosity, were left behind, a reminder of the unknown forces that dwell in the heart of the wilderness. Upon returning to the safety of the known world, Alex's attempts to research the symbols revealed little their origins and meanings obscured by time and secrecy. The experience, however, left a lasting mark, a respect for the mysteries that lie hidden in the natural world, and a cautionary tale of the boundaries that exist between the seen and unseen. Story 21 It started as a serene solo kayaking trip down one of Florida's lesser-known rivers. I was seeking solitude, a break from the incessant buzz of my daily life, the river, a winding silver thread through dense mangroves and under the shade of ancient cypress trees was the perfect escape. My paddle dipped quietly into the crimson-tinted water, an oddity I attributed to the reflection of the sunset sky, not yet realizing the true reason behind the water's hue. As the sun dipped lower, casting long shadows over the water, I noticed the silence, not the peaceful quiet of nature, but an oppressive silence, as if the swamp itself was holding its breath. The air filled with a stench, unbearable, like decay and death mixed with the tang of iron. My heart began to race, the beauty of the place souring into a scene of dread. The river narrowed, and the banks drew closer, the red water now unmistakably blood-like in its color and thickness. The source of the smell and the coloration was hidden, but it felt ominously close. Panic set in, but turning back in the narrow confines was impossible. I had to push forward, hoping for a wider section of the river where I could maneuver and make my way back. The twilight deepened, and the grotesque beauty of the Red River under the dying light was hypnotic. My mind raced with possibilities, was this the aftermath of an alligator feeding frenzy? 
or something far more sinister, tied to the old legends and tales of the area that spoke of ancient curses and lost souls. Suddenly, my kayak hit something submerged, and I was pitched into the icy grip of the water. The shock of the cold was nothing compared to the horror of feeling my hands brush against something solid, something unmistakably human. I scrambled back into the kayak, heart thundering, my clothes soaked with water that now felt tainted with death. My paddle strokes became frantic, the need to escape the enclosing nightmare overwhelming. Then, as suddenly as it began, the river widened, the water cleared, and the stench dissipated, leaving only the fresh, clean scent of natural water and wet earth. The relief was palpable, but the terror of what I had experienced clung to me, a shadow that wouldn't dissipate with the mist. Emerging from the river, I reported my experience to the authorities, but a search of the area revealed nothing. No source for the blood-red water, no sign of any foul play, as if the river had swallowed its secrets, leaving only my story as a chilling testament to the mysteries hidden in its depths. I've never returned to that remote river, and the experience haunts me to this day. The memory of that evening, the terror, the unknown, lingers like a scar. It's a reminder of the thin veil between the known and the unknowable, and of the ancient dark secrets that lie waiting in the remote corners of the world. Story 22 The heat was unbearable, the kind of oppressive warmth that made sweat bead on your forehead the moment you stepped outside. I was part of an archaeological team in Florida, tasked with uncovering evidence of early settlers in the region. Our dig site, a nondescript field that held promise beneath its surface, was about to offer up more than we bargained for. As my trowel scraped against something harder than the surrounding earth, a chill ran down my spine despite the heat. We had found artifacts and remnants of settlements before, but this was different. Carefully, we unearthed what was unmistakably a human form, a grave that wasn't marked on any map, forgotten by time. The body within was eerily preserved, the skin leathered but intact, the facial features discernible and peaceful, as if death had gently cradled him into an eternal sleep. Around the grave, Artifacts hinted at a person of significance, but there was no record of any settlement or individual from the era that matched our find. As we delved deeper into the mystery, a sense of unease settled over the team. Local legends spoke of a guardian spirit, one that watched over the land and its secrets. The more we uncovered, the more accidents and strange occurrences plagued our sight. Tools went missing, shadows flickered at the edge of vision, and an unshakable feeling of being watched pervaded the dig. The night after we had fully exposed the grave, I found myself drawn back to the site under the pull of a curiosity that felt like a compulsion. The air was thick with the scent of decay, not from the grave, but as if the earth itself exuded it in protest of our intrusion. Standing before the grave, the silence of the night enveloped me. Then, a whisper, a voice that seemed to come from the earth, the air, everywhere and nowhere, spoke a warning of a curse one that protected this land and its secrets. I wanted to run, to leave this place and its whispered threats behind, but I was rooted to the spot, caught in the gaze of the preserved corpse that seemed to stare back at me through the darkness. It was a warning, a guardian's threat to those who would disturb the balance. The next day I argued for the site to be covered up, the body to be left in peace. Rational minds argued against superstition, but the accidents, the unease, and the whispered warnings couldn't be ignored. Eventually, the team agreed, and we reburied the grave, leaving the Guardian to watch over his domain once more. Our findings were documented, but the mystery remained. A chapter of Florida's history closed once again, perhaps never meant to be opened. The experience left me with a respect for the secrets that the Earth holds, and the Guardians, real or not, that protect them. Story 23 the road was a ribbon of moonlit asphalt, stretching through the dense Florida backwoods. I was driving home from a late shift, the kind of night where the world seems to sleep, and you're the only soul awake. The only sound was the hum of the engine and the occasional call of a night bird. It was peaceful until it wasn't. As I rounded a bend, my headlights caught a figure walking along the road's edge. In the split second it took to pass him, a chill crawled up my spine, 
He was tall, his features obscured by the night, but there was something unsettlingly familiar about his gait, something I couldn't place. I thought little more of it until the next bend, where my headlights once again illuminated the same figure. Impossible, I thought. I hadn't turned around, there were no side paths he could have taken to outpace me. Yet there he was, walking as if nothing were amiss. Curiosity mingled with unease. I sped up, eager to leave the figure behind. But no matter how fast I drove, every few miles he reappeared, always walking, always at the road's edge, as if he was taunting me. Panic began to set in, the kind that tightens your chest and makes your heart race. I pushed the car faster, the engine whining in protest. Still he reappeared, relentless. It was then, on his fourth appearance, that I noticed something truly terrifying his face was my own, twisted in a grimace of sorrow and pain. I stopped the car, heart pounding, unable to tear my gaze away from this doppelganger. He stopped too, turning to face me directly for the first time. His eyes, my eyes were filled with an unspeakable sadness, a depth of despair that I felt echoed in my own soul. Then he vanished, as if the night had swallowed him whole. The rest of the drive home was a blur of fear and confusion. I couldn't explain what had happened, who or what I had seen. I knew only that the encounter had changed something within me, awakened a part of my soul that understood the world was far more complex and mysterious than I had ever imagined. Days turned into weeks, and life returned to normal, but the memory of that night lingered. I found myself driving slower on back roads, half in fear, half in fear, half in hope that I would see him again. But he never reappeared, leaving me with more questions than answers. Was he a ghost, a harbinger of some future tragedy, or simply a figment of my imagination, born from loneliness in the late hour? I may never know. But the encounter on that lonely Florida back road haunts me still, a reminder of the mysteries that lurk in the shadows of our world. Story 24 The lighthouse stood like a sentinel on the Florida coast, its light a beacon cutting through them a night for decades, guiding ships safely away from peril. Its history was well documented, a proud monument to human ingenuity and a keeper of maritime safety. Or so I thought until I stumbled upon its darkest secret. I was a historical researcher, tasked with uncovering stories for a local museum exhibit. The lighthouse, with its rich history, was a treasure trove of tales. I spent days poring over logs, interviewing families of former keepers, and exploring the structure itself. It was during one of these explorations, in a narrow passageway behind the main stairwell, that I found it a hidden compartment in the wall. Inside, protected from time, were a series of messages, warnings scribbled on old, yellowed paper. The handwriting varied, as did the dates, spanning decades. Each message spoke of a curse, a malevolent force that haunted the lighthouse, tied to its very foundation. Some messages were frantic, others resigned, but all warned of the danger of ignoring the lighthouse's true keeper. Intrigued and unsettled, I delved deeper into the lighthouse's past, beyond the official records and into the realm of local lore. Stories emerged of mysterious disappearances, strange lights seen in the tower when it was supposed to be unoccupied, and eerie sounds that echoed in the mirror. The locals spoke of the lighthouse's curse in hushed tones, a legend I had initially dismissed. Determined to uncover the truth, I spent a night in the lighthouse. As darkness enveloped the coast, the wind carried whispers, and the air grew heavy with a sense of anticipation. Then, at midnight, the lighthouse's light flickered and went out, plunging the structure into darkness. That's when I heard it the sound of footsteps ascending the staircase, though I knew the door was locked and I was supposedly alone. I followed the sound up the winding stairs, my flashlight cutting through the darkness. At the top, the air turned cold, and I saw it a shadowy figure standing by the light, looking out to sea. I felt an overwhelming sadness a deep sense of loss and longing that seemed to emanate from the figure. It turned to me, and in its eyes I saw the pain of a hundred years, a keeper not of the lighthouse but of the curse that bound him to it. The figure vanished as the lighthouse light burst back to life, its beam cutting through the darkness once more. Shaken, I left the lighthouse, the warnings from the hidden compartment echoing in my mind. The lighthouse still stands, its light a beacon in the night. 
but I know now it guards more than the coast it guards a secret, a pact with the darkness, a reminder of the thin line between the known and the unknown. Story 25 In the heart of Florida, a grand hotel stood as a testament to the opulence of a bygone era. Renowned for its lavish parties and distinguished guests, the hotel had weathered decades, its walls echoing with the laughter and whispers of the past. I found myself there not as a guest, but as part of a renovation team, tasked with bringing the hotel's older wings into the modern age while preserving its historic charm. The renovation was progressing smoothly until we discovered a peculiar anomaly in the blueprints. There appeared to be a room, sealed and unaccounted for in the hotel's current layout. Curiosity peaked, we carefully removed the wall that had concealed the entrance for who knows how many years. Stepping inside was like stepping back in time. The room was a perfectly preserved capsule of the hotel's heyday, complete with period furniture and personal belongings. It was as if the occupants had simply vanished, leaving everything behind. Among the items were suitcases packed but never claimed, jewelry laid out but unworn, and most unsettlingly, a collection of photographs depicting guests who, upon further investigation, were never seen or heard from again after their stay at the hotel. As we delved deeper, a palpable sense of unease settled over the team. It was as if the air itself was heavy with secrets and silent screams. The local archives provided little in the way of answers, only deepening the mystery with reports of guests complaining of strange noises, sightings of figures in the hallways, and a general malaise that seemed to afflict some who stayed in that particular wing. Determined to uncover the truth, I spent a night in the newly unveiled room. As the sun set, an oppressive atmosphere enveloped the space. Shadows seemed to move with a life of their own, and the air grew cold. At the stroke of midnight, the room came alive with the faint sound of music, the laughter of ghosts partaking in a party that had ended decades ago. I awoke the next morning unsure if what I had experienced was real or the product of my imagination. However, the discovery of the sealed room prompted a deeper investigation into the hotel's history. It was revealed that the hotel had been the site of several unsolved disappearances during its early years, disappearances that coincided with the last known use of the room. The hotel management decided to keep the room sealed off, a monument to the unsolved mysteries and a reminder of the guests who vanished within its walls. As for me, the experience left an indelible mark, a haunting reminder that some secrets are best left undiscovered, hidden away in the sealed rooms of history. Story 26 The idea of finding a phone booth in the middle of a Florida swamp sounds like the beginning of a bad joke, doesn't it? Yet there I was, knee-deep in murky water, staring at an inexplicably pristine phone booth standing solemnly amongst the cypress trees. The scene was surreal, a stark contrast to the dense, wild swamp around it. Compelled by a mix of curiosity and disbelief, I waded through the water towards it. The phone inside looked like it hadn't seen the touch of human hands for decades, yet it was immaculately clean, as if it was waiting just for me. Hesitantly, I picked up the receiver, half expecting dead silence. Instead, whispers flooded my ear, a cacophony of voices speaking directly to me, revealing secrets I'd never uttered aloud, voicing fears I'd buried deep within my heart. The voices knew me, intimately, sharing details about my life that no stranger should know. My initial fascination turned to horror as I realized that these whispers were not just random secrets, they were my own, whispered back to me with a malevolent intimacy. Panicked, I slammed the receiver down, intending to flee the swamp and its eerie sentinel. But the path back was not as I remembered the swamp seemed to have shifted, disorienting me, leading me in circles. The whispers didn't cease with the receiver down, they followed me, seeping out of the swamp itself, urging me to return, to listen. It took what felt like hours to escape the swamp's grasp, the phone booth a menacing figure in the distance, growing further away yet never quite disappearing from sight. When I finally emerged, drenched and trembling, the reality of the world outside the swamp felt alien, as if I had stepped through a veil into a world subtly shifted. I've tried to find that swamp again, driven by a mix of fear and an inexplicable longing, but it remains hidden, as if it never existed at all. Yet the whispers linger, a haunting reminder of the day I found a phone booth in the depths of a Florida swamp, 
a day that unearthed secrets better left submerged. The experience has left me wary of the quiet places of the world, the spaces between where reality seems thin and the impossible lurks, waiting with bated breath to ensnare the unwary. The phone booth stands in my dreams, an invitation or a warning to those who wander into the shadows. Story 27 Tucked away in the less traveled parts of Florida, where the sun bakes the earth and the air hums with the sound of cicadas, there exists a citrus grove unlike any other. Its existence is not documented on any map, nor does it welcome tourists with open arms. It's a place you find only if it wants to be found, as I unfortunately discovered on a sweltering summer afternoon. The grove appeared suddenly, a mirage of green amidst a landscape parched by the sun. The trees were heavy with fruit, their vibrant colors a stark contrast against the backdrop of wilting vegetation. Drawn in by the sight, I ventured closer, unaware of the grove's ancient and dark history. As I walked among the trees, the air grew cooler, an unnatural chill that seemed out of place under the Florida sun. The citrus scent was overpowering, intoxicating, leading me deeper into the grove. That's when I stumbled upon it, a clearing where the ground was marked with symbols, ancient and ominous, surrounding a stone altar at its center. The grove, as I learned, was the site of rituals dating back centuries, practices long forgotten by the modern world but preserved by the guardians of this place. These rituals were not for the faint of heart, designed to bring about something unspeakable, a pact made with the very land itself. Curiosity overcame my initial hesitation, and I found myself returning to the grove as the sun began to set, drawn by an inexplicable urge to witness one of these ancient ceremonies. As the sky darkened, figures emerged from the shadows of the trees, cloaked and chanting in a language I could not understand. The ceremony was a blur of fire and shadow, the air filled with the scent of citrus and something darker, the coppery tang of blood. The ritual's purpose was unclear, but its power was undeniable, the air crackling with energy as the participants fell into a trance-like state. When it was over, the figures vanished as suddenly as they had appeared, leaving me alone in the clearing, the ground now bare as if the ritual had never taken place. The grove itself seemed to whisper, the leaves rustling with the secrets of centuries, of deals struck and promises kept. I left the grove that night, shaken and unsure of what I had witnessed. The experience haunted me, the images of the ritual burned into my memory. The grove's secrets were a weight, a knowledge that there are things in this world beyond our understanding, ancient and powerful. I never found the grove again, though I searched. It remains hidden, a part of Florida's landscape that exists in the shadows, a reminder of the ancient practices that once defined this land and may still linger, just out of sight. Story 28 It was supposed to be a simple weekend project capturing Florida's wildlife through the lens of my camera, a hobby that had turned into a passionate escape from the mundane. The Everglades provided a rich tapestry of life, a photographer's dream with its vibrant bird life, elusive reptiles, and breathtaking landscapes. I set out at dawn, eager to lose myself in the natural beauty of the wetlands. The day was productive, filled with the quiet company of herons and the distant croaks of alligators. It wasn't until I returned home, scrolling through the day's captures, that I noticed something unsettling. In the background of a series of shots, there was a figure, barely discernible, blending almost perfectly with the surroundings. Initially, I assumed it was another hiker or perhaps a park ranger. But as I zoomed in, a chill ran down my spine. The figure was too tall, its proportions unnatural, with limbs that seemed to stretch too long and a face that was blurred, as if it refused to be captured by my camera. It appeared in several photos, always in the background, watching. I couldn't shake the feeling that this wasn't a trick of the light or a simple case of pareidolia. The figure had an intentional quality to it, as if it was there by choice. Sleep eluded me that night, my dreams haunted by those elongated limbs and that indistinct face. Compelled by a mix of fear and curiosity, I returned to the Everglades, to the exact spots where I'd taken the photos. Daylight offered a veneer of safety, the logic of sunlight dispelling the fears that night had amplified. Yet, the deeper I ventured, the more I felt the weight of unseen eyes upon me. 
Hours passed with no sign of the mysterious figure. Just as I was about to give up, the air shifted, a sudden drop in temperature that had no place in the Florida heat. My skin prickled with goosebumps, and the unmistakable sense of being watched settled over me. I turned slowly, camera raised. There was nothing there, or at least nothing my eyes could see, but the camera. The camera captured a blur, a shadow in the shadow in the shape of a man, just as indistinct as in the photos from my home. It was as if this entity existed only through the lens, a specter visible only when frozen in a moment of time. I left the Everglades with more questions than answers, my venture into wildlife photography yielding an encounter with something unexplainable. The photos remain, a haunting evidence of my experience, a reminder that some mysteries prefer the shadows, only revealing themselves when they so choose. The Everglades are alive with more than just the wildlife they harbor secrets, entities that defy explanation, existing in the periphery of our understanding. I still photograph nature, but now I can't help but wonder what watches from just beyond the frame. Story 29 It started with an opportunity that felt like a dream come true. As a recent history graduate, being offered a position at one of Florida's most renowned museums was nothing short of a miracle. My days were filled with artifacts and tales from the past, each piece holding stories of a world long gone. However, it was after the sun set and the visitors departed that the true mystery of the museum began to unfold. The museum, an elegant structure of aged stone and timeless architecture, housed collections that spanned the breadth of human history. From ancient Egyptian relics to pieces of Florida's own past, the halls were a tapestry of time itself. My duties often required me to stay late, cataloging new acquisitions or preparing exhibits. That's when I first noticed the anomalies. It began subtly, with the sensation of being watched. The vast halls, so welcoming by day, transformed into a labyrinth of shadows by night, each exhibit casting long, eerie figures that danced in the corner of my vision. I shrugged it off as the product of an overactive imagination, fueled by the solitude and the silent gaze of a thousand artifacts. Then came the footsteps. They were faint at first, as if someone were pacing the marble floors a few rooms away. I would follow the sound, only to find the space empty, the echoes of my own steps the only proof I hadn't imagined them. I rationalized it as the building settling, its ancient bones creaking with age. But the night I heard the whispers, everything changed. They were soft, indecipherable murmurs that seemed to emanate from the exhibits themselves. I stood in the center of the Egyptian wing, surrounded by sarcophagi and statues of gods long since worshipped, as the whispers swirled around me. It was a language I couldn't understand, ancient and melodic, filled with the weight of millennia. The whispers guided me, pulling me deeper into the museum, toward a section that housed artifacts from early Floridian settlers. As I approached, the temperature dropped, breath forming in the air before me, a frosty mist in the warmth of a Florida night. That's when I saw its shadows moving where no shadow should, figures draped in the garb of settlers, reenacting scenes of daily life, transparent and ethereal. I watched, frozen in fascination and fear, as one turned to look directly at me, its eyes hollow yet filled with an ancient sorrow. It spoke, and though I couldn't understand the words, the meaning was clear a plea for remembrance, a fear of being forgotten to the sands of time. Night after night I was drawn back to the museum, each visit unveiling more shadows from the past, each artifact whispering its story, eager to be heard by someone who would listen. I began to document my experiences, my rational mind struggling to make sense of the supernatural occurrences. The culmination came one evening with the unveiling of a new exhibit, artifacts unearthed from a Native American burial site, their removal controversial and fraught with ethical dilemmas. As I worked alone, preparing the exhibit under the watchful eyes of the ancient spirits, the atmosphere shifted, a tangible charge filling the air. The whispers grew into voices, clear and commanding, the shadows solidifying into figures that moved with purpose. They surrounded me, not threatening, but imploring, sharing visions of their lives, their deaths, and the desecration of their final resting places. As the clock struck midnight, the air shimmered with the power of their presence, and for a moment, 
the veil between the past and the present thinned to a whisper. I saw the museum not as a collection of artifacts but as a gathering of spirits, each piece a tether to the world they knew, each whisper a bridge between times. The figures faded with the dawn, leaving behind a silence that was anything but empty. I was left with a profound sense of responsibility, a guardian of not just the physical remnants of the past, but of the stories and spirits they represented. The museum became a place of reverence for me, each artifact cherished, each exhibit a testament to the lives that had shaped the world we know. The whispers still come, and the shadows still dance in the periphery of my vision, but fear has been replaced with understanding solitude with the company of history itself. I shared my experiences with a select few, those open to the mysteries that science can't explain. Together we began to shift the museum's approach, integrating the spiritual history of the artifacts with their physical history, honoring the past in a way that brought peace to the restless spirits. The museum stands now not just as a repository of artifacts but as a bridge between worlds, a place where the whispers of the past are heard and heeded. And as for me, I have found my calling not just as a curator of history, but as a listener to the whispers in the museum, a guardian of the stories that refuse to be silenced by time. Story 30 In a quaint town nestled within Florida's embrace, where the mundane meets the mysterious, I found myself volunteering at the local library. It was a building as old as the town itself, with secrets tucked away in every corner and shadows that whispered of the past. My days were filled with the scent of old books, and the quiet hum of knowledge waiting to be discovered. One evening, as I was cataloging ancient donations, I stumbled upon a book that wasn't listed in any records. It was bound in leather that felt too smooth, too alive under my fingertips. Its pages were edged with gold, and it seemed to hum with a faint, otherworldly energy. The title was engraved in a script I couldn't recognize, and it resisted every attempt to be opened, as if it held secrets that were meant to remain hidden. Curiosity, that most human of traits, overtook my better judgment. Night after night, I tried to decipher the title, to find a way to breach its secrets. It became an obsession, one that led me down the forgotten paths of the town's history, into tales of rituals and legends whispered under the cover of darkness, of a book that held truths too terrifying for the mortal mind to comprehend. The breakthrough came on a night when the moon was a mere sliver in the sky, and the air was charged with an anticipation I could feel in my bones. The book opened, not at my command, but as if it had chosen the time to reveal its contents. Inside, I found not words but images that moved and shifted scenes of rituals and ceremonies that spoke of a power rooted deep in the land on which the town was built. The more I watched, the more I felt drawn into its depths. The scenes changed, showing the town as it was centuries ago, a place of power where the veil between worlds was thin and beings of old walked freely. The rituals were meant to keep this balance, to honor the ancient pact made with those beings, a pact that had been broken as the town grew and modernity swept away the old beliefs. As the last page turned, a realization hit me with the force of a physical blow. The book was not merely a record, it was a warning. The balance had been upset, and the signs were there for those who knew to look the strange occurrences, the whispers in the shadows, the way the wildlife avoided certain areas of the town, as if they remembered what humans had forgotten. The final image was the most disturbing. It showed the library, the very room I was in, and within it a figure emerged from the book, a guardian of the knowledge and rituals contained within, its eyes seeking those who would either restore the balance or suffer the consequences of its loss. I closed the book, and the library was silent once more, the weight of the revelation heavy in the air. The book had chosen me, but whether as a warning or a call to action, I couldn't tell. What I did know was that the town, with its quiet charm and hidden shadows, was more than it seemed. It was a nexus of ancient power, and I had unwittingly stepped into the heart of its mystery. The following days were filled with research and cautious inquiries. The town's elders spoke in riddles, and the local history books hinted at ceremonies and agreements made in the town's infancy all leading back to the land itself and the beings that once roamed freely. The library became my base, the book my guide as I delved deeper into the rituals, learning the ancient words and the meanings behind the symbols. I realized that to restore the balance, 
A ceremony needed to be performed, one that would reaffirm the town's respect and acknowledgement of the ancient powers. It required a gathering of the community at a place where the veil was thinnest, under the right celestial alignment. The risks were immense the ceremony had not been performed for generations, and the knowledge was fragmented at best. But the alternative was to ignore the escalating signs, to hope that the imbalance would correct itself, a hope that the book and the history of the town seemed to refute. The whispers in the shadows grew louder, and the air in the town charged with a tension that everyone could feel but no one could explain. The night of the ceremony was clear, the stars bright against the dark velvet of the sky. The chosen site was an ancient grove, where the energy of the land was palpable, vibrating with anticipation. The townspeople gathered, skepticism mixed with an underlying fear of the unknown. As the ceremony began, led by the words and rituals outlined in the book, the air around us shimmered, and the veil thinned. The beings of old, the guardians of the land, emerged from the shadows, their forms flickering between this world and theirs. The townspeople watched in awe and terror as the ancient pact was renewed, the balance restored with promises to honor the old ways and acknowledge the beings that walked alongside them. The aftermath of the ceremony was a town changed. The whispers in the shadows quieted, the wildlife returned, and the air lost its charged tension. The book disappeared that night, its purpose fulfilled, leaving behind a town that had glimpsed the mysteries it was built upon and a librarian forever changed by the knowledge of what lay just beyond the veil. As for me, the experience left a mark, a deep understanding of the forces that shape our world, seen and unseen. The library remains a sanctuary, not just of knowledge, but of secrets and mysteries that are waiting to be discovered by those brave enough to look. Story 31 In the heart of a small Florida town, where the roots of the community run as deep as the oaks lining its streets, the arrival of Hurricane Eloise was met with a mixture of fear and resignation. We had weathered storms before, each leaving its mark on the town, but none like Eloise. She tore through our community with a fury that spoke of nature's indomitable will, uprooting trees and reshaping landscapes. Yet it was in her aftermath that the true anomaly was discovered a buried time capsule, not filled with mementos of the past, but with dire warnings for the future. The capsule was found in the oldest part of the cemetery, unearthed by the storm's relentless winds and rain. Its discovery was accidental, a consequence of the cleanup efforts, but its contents were no mere coincidence. Inside, protected from time by airtight seals, were documents and items that defied logical explanation. Each piece was a prediction, a prophecy of disasters that were to befall not just our town, but the world beyond. At first, the predictions seemed like the ramblings of a bygone era's eccentric tales of fires that would consume entire forests, storms of unprecedented strength and diseases that would spread with the ease of a whisper. Yet, as the weeks turned to months, the eerie accuracy of the capsule's contents became impossible to ignore. Events that were described in detail with dates and locations began to unfold, each prediction coming to pass with unsettling precision. The town was split on how to interpret the capsule's revelations. Some saw it as a hoax, an elaborate prank left by a previous generation with too much time on their hands. Others felt it was a warning, a message from the past urging us to change our ways before it was too late. But there were those who saw it as something more evidence of a deeper, more profound connection to the cycles of time and nature, a plea from the past to the future. Driven by a need to understand, I delved into the history of the capsule, tracing its origins back to a group known as the Oracles of the Osprey, a collective of individuals who, in their time, were considered guardians of knowledge, both scientific and mystical. They believed in the cyclical nature of history in the patterns that repeated over ages, and they had dedicated themselves to charting these cycles, predicting events that would shape the future. The more I learned, the more I became convinced that the capsule was not just a collection of predictions, but a map of sorts, a guide to navigating the tumultuous times ahead. Each event, each event, each disaster was a signpost, marking moments of potential change and decision points for humanity. As the predictions continued to unfold, the significance of the capsule and its message became a beacon for those seeking to understand the forces that shape our world. It sparked debates on climate change, on the stewardship of the Earth, and on the interconnectedness of all things. The capsule, 
and the oracles who created it became symbols of a deeper awareness, a call to heed the lessons of the past to navigate the uncertainties of the future. Yet, even as we grappled with the implications of the capsule's contents, new predictions emerged, each pointing to challenges greater than any we had faced. The final item in the capsule, a sealed letter to be opened only when all other predictions had come to pass, remained an enigma, its contents unknown. The story of the capsule and its predictions spread far beyond the borders of our town, becoming a subject of fascination and study for people around the world. It challenged us to look beyond the immediate, to see the patterns and cycles that govern our existence, and to consider the legacy we leave for the generations that will follow. As we stand on the threshold of the future, the capsule serves as a reminder of the responsibility we bear to our planet, to each other, and to the countless lives yet to come. It is a testament to the power of foresight, to the importance of listening to the voices of the past as we forge our path into the unknown. The time capsule from Hurricane Eloise has become more than just a curiosity, it has become a catalyst for change, a bridge between the wisdom of the past and the possibilities of the future, urging us to act before it's too late. As we face the challenges ahead, the message of the oracles of the Osprey echoes through the ages, a beacon of hope and a call to action in our quest to shape a better world. Story 32 The fortress stood as a testament to Florida's tumultuous history, its weathered stones whispering tales of conquest and defense, of settlers and natives, of battles fought and lost. It was a relic of the past, or so I believed, drawn to explore its ruins by a fascination with history and the echoes of those who once walked its halls. As I wandered through the fortress, the air heavy with the scent of salt from the sea and the musk of decay, I marveled at the resilience of the structure, at the stories it must hold within its walls. My exploration was aimless until I discovered a hidden doorway, cleverly concealed behind what appeared to be a solid wall, a remnant of the fortress's defensive designs. Curiosity propelled me forward, the thrill of discovery igniting my imagination. What secrets did this hidden room hold? Was it a treasury of sorts, a storage for the fort's armaments, or perhaps something more sinister? The room was stark, the air cooler and somehow heavier. Rows of devices lined the walls, their purpose clear and chilling. These were instruments of pain and coercion, relics of a darker aspect of human history. Yet, as I examined them closer, a disquieting realization settled over me. Among the ancient racks and iron masks were items that bore the unmistakable marks of recent use. Leather straps that were not worn with age but with use, metal surfaces free of the patina that spoke of centuries. These were not museum pieces, they were tools that had seen recent action. A sense of unease washed over me, the excitement of discovery souring into horror. What was this place? A historical site should not house such horrors, especially not ones that whispered of recent use. My mind raced with possibilities, each more unsettling than the last. Had I stumbled upon some secret society's lair, a group that clung to archaic and brutal practices under the guise of tradition or ritual, the need for answers drove me deeper into the investigation. Research into the fortress's history revealed little, its past well documented up to a point, then shrouded in mystery. Local archives held tantalizing hints of a period of darkness, of missing persons, and of strange lights seen in the skies above the fortress. Yet, nothing concrete, nothing that explained the room and its contents. Determined to uncover the truth, I reached out to historians, to enthusiasts of the paranormal, to anyone who might shed light on the fortress's secrets. Theories abounded, from the plausible to the fantastically absurd, yet all shared a common thread of belief that the fortress was a focal point, a nexus of historical and supernatural forces. Armed with this knowledge, and a healthy dose of skepticism, I returned to the fortress, to the room that had sparked this quest. My approach was methodical, documenting each device, each mark of recent use, seeking to understand not just the how, but the why. It was during one of these visits, as I was examining a particularly gruesome device, that I discovered it a hidden compartment within the wall, obscured by the shadows. Inside, I found documents, letters, and diaries, their contents revealing a story that bridged the gap between the past and the present. 
The fortress, it seemed, had been the site of a secret society, one that traced its origins back to the earliest days of the settlement. They were guardians, they claimed, protectors of a knowledge so profound, so dangerous, that it necessitated the continuation of practices that the modern world would deem barbaric. Their mission was to keep this knowledge hidden, to protect the world from truths it was not ready to face, and they had continued their work in the shadows, unnoticed, until now. The revelation was staggering. Here, in my hands, was evidence of a conspiracy that spanned centuries, of a belief so strong it defied morality, defied the progress of civilization. The society was real, their mission earnest, and their methods horrifying. Yet, even as I delved into the documents, a part of me questioned their veracity. Was this the truth, or simply another layer of the fortress's mysteries, a tale crafted to mislead and obfuscate? The devices, the recent marks of use, the documents, they all pointed to a reality that was impossible to ignore, yet difficult to accept. The fortress, with its hidden room and its dark secrets, had become more than just a site of historical interest. It was a reminder of the lengths to which humanity will go in the pursuit of its goals, of the darkness that lies just beneath the surface of our civilized veneer. As I emerged from the fortress, the documents in hand, I knew that my journey was far from over. The secrets uncovered demanded action, demanded to be brought to light. Yet, the society's reach, their influence remained unknown. How far would they go to protect their secrets? And more importantly, how far was I willing to go to expose them? The fortress stood silent behind me, its stones a silent testament to the complexities of human nature, to our capacity for greatness and for unspeakable acts. It was a reminder that history is not just a record of the past, but a mirror reflecting our present and our future. Story 33 The decision to embark on a camping adventure deep within the heart of the Everglades was both exhilarating and daunting. The promise of untamed wilderness, lush vegetation, and the mysteries of the swampy terrain had lured me into this remote corner of Florida. Little did I know that my rendezvous was with nature would soon take a chilling turn into the realm of primal fear. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting hues of crimson and gold across the sky, I set up my modest campsite amidst the towering cypress trees and murky waters of the Everglades. The air was thick with the sounds of chirping crickets and croaking frogs, creating a symphony of nature's nocturnal chorus. The darkness descended swiftly, cloaking the landscape in an inky shroud. With the flicker of my flashlight, I ignited the fire pit, its dancing flames casting eerie shadows that danced along the gnarled roots and twisted branches surrounding me. The crackling of the fire offered a semblance of comfort in the vast expanse of the wilderness. As fatigue began to weigh heavily upon my eyelids, I retired to my tent, seeking refuge from the enveloping darkness. The rhythmic chirping of insects lulled me into a restless slumber, punctuated by the occasional rustle of leaves and distant hoots of nocturnal creatures. It was in the dead of night when I was abruptly jolted awake by a guttural snarl echoing through the stillness of the swamp. My heart pounded against my ribcage as I strained to discern the source of the ominous sound. Peering through the mesh of my tent, I caught a glimpse of movement in the moonlit clearing beyond. With trembling hands, I fumbled for my flashlight, its feeble beam cutting through the oppressive darkness. My breath caught in my throat as the stark light illuminated the sinister figures lurking just beyond the perimeter of my campsite. A chorus of glowing eyes reflected back at me from the shadows, their fiery orbs fixated upon my trembling form. In the silvery glow of the moonlight, I beheld the menacing silhouette of alligators, their formidable forms looming ominously in the murky waters that encircled my makeshift sanctuary. A cold shiver raced down my spine as I realized the precariousness of my situation. Trapped within the confines of my flimsy tent, I was at the mercy of these ancient predators, their primal instincts awakened by the scent of my presence. With bated breath, I watched as the alligators prowled around the perimeter of my campsite their predatory gaze never wavering. Each rustle of underbrush and ripple in the water sent waves of terror coursing through my veins as I grappled with the harrowing reality of my predicament. Hours passed in agonizing silence, punctuated only by the occasional snap of jaws and the haunting calls of nocturnal creatures. 
Every fiber of my being screamed for escape, yet the treacherous waters and lurking predators barred any hope of salvation. Dawn broke upon the horizon, casting a faint glimmer of hope amidst the desolation of the swamp. With trembling hands I mustered the courage to emerge from the confines of my tent, my heart pounding against my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. To my relief, the alligators had vanished into the murky depths from whence they came, leaving behind no trace of their nocturnal vigil. With a sigh of relief, I hastily dismantled my campsite, eager to put as much distance between myself and the haunting memories of that fateful night. As I trudged through the dense undergrowth, the eerie stillness of the Everglades enveloped me once more, its secrets shrouded in the mists of time. Though I had survived the night's ordeal, the chilling encounter with nature's apex predators would forever haunt my dreams, a stark reminder of the untamed wilderness that lay hidden beneath the surface of the swamp. Story 34 The sun hung low on the horizon, casting a golden hue across the desolate stretch of road that wound its way through the Florida Keys. With the windows rolled down and the salty breeze caressing my skin, I embarked on a solitary journey through this remote corner of paradise. Little did I know that my scenic drive would lead me down a path shrouded in the shadows of a forgotten past. As I navigated the winding roads flanked by towering palms and endless expanses of azure sea, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness. The air grew heavy with a palpable tension, as if the very atmosphere held its breath in anticipation of the secrets that lay concealed amidst the tranquil beauty of the Keys. It was amidst this surreal backdrop that I caught sight of the crumbling remnants of a forgotten town, its dilapidated buildings standing as silent sentinels to a bygone era. With a sense of morbid curiosity, I veered off the main road and into the heart of this desolate enclave, the crunch of gravel beneath my tires echoing in the eerie silence that enveloped the abandoned streets. The once vibrant facades of the buildings now lay in ruin, their weathered walls adorned with layers of peeling paint and creeping vines. As I wandered through the ghostly thoroughfares, a chill ran down my spine at the sight of shattered windows and boarded up doorways, their secrets locked away behind layers of neglect and decay. Yet it was not the crumbling structures that sent shivers racing down my spine, but the eerie whispers that seemed to linger in the stagnant air, their haunting echoes reverberating through the empty streets. At first I dismissed them as nothing more than a trick of the wind or the rustling of leaves, but as I delved deeper into the heart of the abandoned town, their presence became undeniable. With each step I took, the whispers grew louder, their spectral voices weaving a tapestry of half-forgotten memories and whispered secrets. I could almost feel the weight of their sorrow pressing down upon me, as if the very essence of the town itself cried out in to the fading light of the dusk, silence of its I stumbled desolation. upon the remnants of an old saloon, its weathered sign swaying in the breeze like a silent sentinel guarding the entrance to a realm of forgotten dreams. With trembling hands, I pushed open the creaking doors and stepped into the dimly lit interior the musty scent of age and decay hanging heavy in the air. It was then that I heard it, a soft murmuring that seemed to emanate from the very walls themselves, their time-worn timbers whispering tales of love and loss, triumph and tragedy. I could almost see the specters of the past flitting through the shadows, their ethereal forms dancing in the flickering candlelight as they enacted the dramas of bygone days. With a sense of trepidation, I explored the abandoned saloon, my footsteps echoing in the hollow silence that pervaded the air. Yet try as I might, I could find no trace of the source of the whispers that seemed to follow me wherever I went, their elusive presence taunting me from the shadows. As the last rays of sunlight faded from the sky, casting the town in an eerie half-light, I knew that it was time to depart this spectral enclave and return to the safety of the outside world. Yet as I turned to leave, a faint whisper brushed against my ear its spectral voice echoing in the depths of my mind. And though I knew not the secrets that lay hidden within the shadows of the abandoned town, I could sense that they were not meant for mortal ears, their whispered truths destined to remain forever shrouded in the mists of time. With a heavy heart and a sense of foreboding, I bid farewell to the ghostly enclave of the Florida Keys, knowing that its whispered secrets would haunt my dreams for nights to come.
Story 35 The sun beat down mercilessly upon the sprawling grounds of the old plantation house in northern Florida as I ventured into its forgotten halls, my footsteps echoing in the stillness of the deserted estate. The air was heavy with the scent of magnolia blossoms and decay, a haunting juxtaposition of beauty and desolation that seemed to permeate every corner of the crumbling mansion. As I explored the dilapidated interior, my eyes were drawn to a narrow staircase hidden behind a tangle of cobwebs and neglect. With a sense of trepidation I ascended the creaking steps, their time-worn timbers groaning beneath my weight. At the top of the stairs I discovered a hidden room concealed behind a faded tapestry, its entrance obscured by years of accumulated dust and grime. With trembling hands I pushed aside the heavy fabric and stepped into the dimly lit chamber, the air thick with the scent of age and decay. What greeted me within was a tableau of forgotten relics and haunting memories, each one whispering tales of a bygone era steeped in cruelty and oppression. Dust-covered furniture lined the walls, their once opulent surfaces now marred by the ravages of time. In the center of the room stood a weathered desk, upon which lay a tattered journal bound in cracked leather. With a sense of morbid fascination, I opened the journal and began to read its yellowed pages each word a testament to the unspeakable acts of cruelty that had transpired within the walls of the plantation house. Tales of slavery and exploitation leapt from the pages, their stark prose painting a chilling portrait of a dark chapter in the estate's history. As I delved deeper into the journal, I discovered accounts of torture and suffering inflicted upon the enslaved inhabitants of the plantation, their anguished cries echoing through the corridors of the mansion. The names of the perpetrators were written in blood-red ink, their deeds immortalized in the pages of the journal for all eternity. With each turn of the page I felt a sense of revulsion and horror wash over me, as if the very essence of the plantation house itself recoiled in shame at the atrocities that had been committed within its walls. Yet amidst the darkness, there was a glimmer of hope, as tales of rebellion and resistance emerged from the depths of despair their protagonists fighting valiantly against the chains of oppression. As I closed the journal and stepped back into the fading light of day, I knew that I could not leave the plantation house without bearing witness to the ghosts of its past. With a heavy heart and a sense of solemn reverence, I vowed to honor the memory of those who had suffered within its walls, their voices echoing in the windswept corridors of history. Story 36 the waters off the coast of Miami beckoned me with their sapphire depths and shimmering allure, promising an adventure beneath the waves unlike any other. Armed with nothing but a snorkel and a sense of wonder, I plunged into the azure expanse, eager to explore the secrets that lay hidden beneath the surface. As I descended into the cool embrace of the ocean, a world of vibrant coral reefs and darting fish unfolded before me, their kaleidoscopic hues painting a mesmerizing tapestry of life and color. Yet amidst the beauty of the underwater landscape, there lurked a shadowy presence that sent shivers racing down my spine. It was then that I caught sight of the skeletal remains of a sunken ship, its time-worn hull nestled amidst the coral formations like a forgotten relic of a bygone era. With a mixture of trepidation and curiosity, I approached the wreck, the salty sea breeze whispering tales of maritime tragedy and lost souls. As I drew closer, the true extent of the ship's demise became painfully apparent, its once majestic form now reduced to a rusted hulk adorned with barnacles and seaweed. Yet it was not the wreckage itself that filled me with dread, but the sight of skeletal remains still trapped within its decaying embrace. With a sense of morbid fascination I swam closer to the wreck, my heart pounding against my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. Through the murky depths, I could see the ghostly outlines of human bones entangled amidst the wreckage, their silent testament to the fateful voyage that had led to their demise. As I explored the sunken ship, I uncovered fragments of a long-forgotten past, each one a piece of the puzzle that had led to the vessel's tragic end. Tattered sails fluttered in the ocean currents, their once vibrant colors faded by the relentless passage of time. Rusty cannons lay scattered across the ocean floor their silent barrels pointing accusingly towards the surface above. Yet amidst the wreckage, there was a sense of haunting beauty, as if the souls of the departed lingered amidst the shadows of the deep, 
their silent vigil a testament to the enduring power of the human spirit. With a heavy heart and a sense of reverence, I paid homage to the fallen sailors, their memories forever etched into the fabric of the ocean's vast expanse. As I surfaced from the depths, the sun hung low on the horizon, casting a golden glow across the waters of Miami. Though my encounter with the sunken ship had filled me with a profound sense of melancholy, it had also reminded me of the fragile beauty and eternal mysteries that lay hidden beneath the waves. Story 37 The murky waters of the swamps near Gainesville beckoned me with their twisted beauty and untamed allure as I embarked on a kayaking trip into the heart of this primordial wilderness. With each stroke of my paddle, the dense foliage closed in around me enveloping me in a world of tangled vines and looming cypress trees. As I navigated the labyrinthine channels of the swamp, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness, as if the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy. Yet amidst the eerie silence that hung like a shroud over the waters, I never expected the chilling encounter that awaited me just around the bend. It was then that I caught sight of a massive python coiled around the branches of a looming cypress tree, its predatory gaze fixed upon my trembling form. With a sense of primal fear coursing through my veins, I froze in place, my paddle poised mid-air as the serpent's coils tightened around the branches above me. For what felt like an eternity, I found myself locked in a silent battle of wills with the serpent, its steely gaze piercing through the murky waters like twin daggers of obsidian. With each passing moment, the python's coils drew closer, threatening to ensnare me within their suffocating embrace. In a desperate bid for survival, I summoned every ounce of strength and resolve within me, mustering the courage to break free from the paralyzing grip of fear. With a swift motion, I veered my kayak away from the looming threat, the sound of the python's enraged hiss echoing through the stillness of the swamp. As I paddled away from the scene of my brush with death, the memory of the massive python and its chilling gaze lingered in the recesses of my mind, a haunting reminder of the primal dangers that lurked within the untamed wilderness of the swamps. Story 38 The isolated beaches of Sarasota stretched before me like a pristine canvas, their powdery sands and azure waters a testament to the untouched beauty of Florida's coastline. The sun dipped low on the horizon, casting a golden glow over the tranquil serenity of the shoreline as I wandered along the edge of the tide, the gentle lapping of the waves soothing my weary soul. It was a scene of serene perfection, a moment of solace amidst the chaos of everyday life. Yet amidst the tranquil beauty of the beach, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness, as if the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy. It was then that I stumbled upon a sight that sent shivers racing down my spine and chilled me to the core. In the fading light of dusk, I came upon a collection of weathered dolls arranged in a circle upon the sand, their glassy eyes seeming to follow my every move with an unsettling intensity. At first glance, they appeared innocuous, their faded colors and threadbare clothing giving them the appearance of forgotten playthings left behind by careless children. Yet as I drew closer, a sense of mounting dread washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to engulf me in its suffocating embrace. Each doll bore the marks of time and neglect, their once vibrant colors faded by the relentless passage of years spent exposed to the elements. Their porcelain faces were etched with lines of wear and tear, their painted smiles frozen in expressions of eerie permanence. Yet it was not their weathered exteriors that filled me with unease, but the sense of malevolence that seemed to emanate from their lifeless forms. As I gazed upon the silent assembly of dolls, a cold shiver raced down my spine, as if the very air itself crackled with another worldly energy. With each passing moment, I felt as though I was being watched by unseen eyes, their gaze piercing through the veil of darkness that cloaked the isolated beach. In a desperate bid to escape the suffocating grip of fear, I turned and fled from the scene, the sound of my footfalls echoing through the empty expanse of sand. Yet try as I might, I could not shake the feeling that the glassy eyes of the dolls continued to follow me, their silent vigil a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of perception. As I stumbled blindly through the darkness, the pounding of my heart drowned out all other sound, 
my breath coming in ragged gasps as I fought to distance myself from the sinister tableau I had encountered upon the beach. Yet no matter how far I ran, the sense of unease lingered like a shadow upon my soul, its tendrils reaching out to ensnare me in their icy grasp. Hours passed in a blur of frantic motion, the moon casting its ghostly light upon the deserted landscape as I stumbled blindly through the darkness. With each step, the feeling of being watched grew stronger, until it felt as though a thousand unseen eyes were boring into my very soul, their malevolent gaze stripping away the layers of my sanity with each passing moment. At last, exhausted and trembling with fear, I collapsed upon the sands, the weight of my terror pressing down upon me like a leaden blanket. In the silence of the night, I could hear the faint sound of laughter echoing in the distance, a mocking chorus that seemed to taunt me with its cruel indifference to my suffering. It was then that I knew I could run no longer, that I must face the darkness that lurked within the depths of my own mind. With a trembling hand, I reached out and grasped one of the weathered dolls, its glassy eyes staring back at me with a chilling intensity that sent a shiver racing down my spine. In that moment of clarity, I realized the truth of what lay before me. The dolls were not mere playthings, but vessels for something far more sinister, something that lurked in the shadows and fed upon the fear of those who dared to approach. And though I knew not the nature of the darkness that surrounded me, I vowed to confront it with every ounce of strength and courage that remained within me. With a deep breath, I rose to my feet and faced the darkness head on, knowing that the only way to conquer my fear was to embrace it with all the courage I could muster. And though the night was long and fraught with peril, I emerged on the other side stronger and more resilient than I had ever been before, a survivor in a world of shadows and whispers. As the first light of dawn broke upon the horizon, I cast one final glance back at the deserted beach the memory of the dolls and their malevolent gaze forever etched into the fabric of my being. And though I knew that I could never erase the horrors I had witnessed, I also knew that I had emerged from the darkness stronger and more alive than ever before, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the human soul. And so, as I turned and walked away from the isolated beach, I knew that I carried with me not only the memory of the dolls and the darkness that lurked within them, but also the knowledge that I had faced my deepest fears and emerged victorious in the end. For though the shadows may still linger in the corners of my mind, they can never extinguish the light of hope that burns within me, a beacon of courage and resilience in a world fraught with darkness and despair. Story 39 the dense forests of Ocala National Forest loomed before me like a labyrinth of shadows and secrets, their ancient trees towering overhead like silent sentinels guarding the mysteries that lay hidden within their depths. With each step I took, the oppressive silence of the wilderness pressed down upon me like a weight, suffocating me in its clammy embrace. As I ventured deeper into the heart of the forest, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness as if the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy. It was then that I heard them, blood-curdling screams echoing through the trees, cries of lost souls. My heart pounded against my ribcage like a drumbeat of impending doom as I followed the eerie sound deeper into the forest, my senses heightened to a fever pitch. Each step brought me closer to the source of the screams, until at last I stumbled upon a clearing bathed in the wan light of the moon. There, amidst the twisted undergrowth and tangled vines, I beheld a scene of unspeakable horror. A group of shadowy figures stood in a circle, their faces obscured by the darkness as they chanted in an ancient tongue that sent shivers racing down my spine. Their voices rose and fell in a haunting cadence, weaving a tapestry of madness and despair that hung heavy in the air like a pall of death. As I watched in silent terror, the figures continued their macabre ritual their movements fluid and hypnotic in the pale moonlight. I could feel the malevolence that emanated from the clearing like a physical presence, wrapping around me like a vice and squeezing the breath from my lungs. With each passing moment, the sense of impending doom grew stronger, until it felt as though the very fabric of reality itself was unraveling before my eyes. Shadows danced in the corners of my vision, twisting and writhing in an unholy frenzy that threatened to consume me whole. In a desperate bid for escape, I turned and fled from the scene, 
the sound of the chanting fading into the distance as I plunged deeper into the heart of the forest. Yet try as I might, I could not shake the feeling that the echoes of terror that had haunted me in that accursed clearing would follow me for the rest of my days. The darkness closed in around me like a suffocating cloak, its tendrils reaching out to ensnare me in their icy grasp. I stumbled blindly through the undergrowth, my heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of doom. Every rustle of leaves and every snap of twigs sent a jolt of fear coursing through my veins, as if the very forest itself conspired against me. Hours passed in a blur of frantic motion, the moonlight filtering through the dense canopy overhead like shards of broken glass. With each passing moment, the sense of unease that had plagued me since entering the forest grew stronger, until it felt as though I were being pursued by unseen forces bent on my destruction. At last, exhausted and trembling with fear, I collapsed upon the forest floor, the sounds of the night closing in around me like a symphony of madness. In the silence of the darkness, I could hear the faint sound of laughter echoing in the distance, a mocking chorus that seemed to taunt me with its cruel indifference to my suffering. It was then that I knew I could run no longer, that I must face the darkness that lurked within the depths of my own mind. With a trembling hand I reached out and grasped the pendant that hung around my neck, its polished surface warm against my skin. As I closed my eyes and focused on the rhythmic beat of my own heartbeat, I felt a sense of calm wash over me like a gentle breeze. In that moment of clarity, I realized that the true source of the terror that had plagued me lay not in the forest itself, but in the depths of my own soul. With a deep breath, I rose to my feet and faced the darkness head on, knowing that the only way to conquer my fear was to embrace it with all the courage I could muster. And though the night was long and fraught with peril, I emerged on the other side stronger and more resilient than I had ever been before a survivor in a world of shadows and whispers. As the first light of dawn broke upon the horizon, I cast one final glance back at the accursed clearing, the memory of the figures and their chilling ritual forever etched into the fabric of my being. And though I knew that I could never erase the horrors I had witnessed, I also knew that I had emerged from the darkness stronger and more alive than ever before, a testament to the indomitable spirit of the human soul. And so as I turned and walked away from the forest, I knew that I carried with me not only the memory of the figures and the darkness that surrounded them, but also the knowledge that I had faced my deepest fears and emerged victorious in the end. For though the shadows may still linger in the corners of my mind, they can never extinguish the light of hope that burns within me, a beacon of courage and resilience in a world fraught with darkness and despair. Story 40 the abandoned asylum in Tallahassee stood like a crumbling monument to the forgotten souls who had once sought refuge within its decaying walls. As I approached the imposing structure, a sense of foreboding washed over me like a tide of darkness, the air heavy with the weight of untold horrors that lingered in the shadows. With each step I took, the oppressive silence of the asylum pressed down upon me like a suffocating shroud, suffusing the air with an eerie stillness that seemed to reverberate through the very fabric of reality. The once grand facade of the building loomed overhead, its windows boarded up and its doors chained shut, as if to keep out the prying eyes of the curious and the unwelcome. Yet despite the warnings whispered by the wind, I felt drawn to explore the abandoned asylum my curiosity piqued by the allure of the unknown. With a mixture of trepidation and excitement, I pushed open the rusted gates and stepped into the darkness beyond, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the deserted corridors like a dirge for the forgotten souls who had once walked these halls. As I ventured deeper into the heart of the asylum, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness, as if the very walls themselves were watching me with malevolent intent. Shadows danced in the corners of my vision, twisting and writhing in a macabre dance that sent shivers racing down my spine. It was then that I felt it, a cold sensation creeping up my spine like icy fingers tracing their way along my flesh. With a sudden jolt of fear I realized that I was not alone in the abandoned asylum, that there was something lurking in the darkness, waiting to ensnare me in its icy grasp. As I turned to confront the source of the chilling sensation, a sense of dread washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to drag me down into the depths of despair. And then I felt it, a hand gripping my shoulder with an iron grip, 
its touch sending a shock of terror coursing through my veins. With a trembling hand, I reached out to brush aside the phantom hand that gripped me, my fingers grasping at thin air as if trying to grasp hold of the intangible. Yet when I turned around, there was nobody there, only the empty corridors of the abandoned asylum stretching out before me like a labyrinth of darkness. For a moment, I stood frozen in place, my heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. And then with a surge of adrenaline, I turned and fled from the asylum, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the deserted halls like a desperate plea for salvation. As I emerged from the darkness of the abandoned asylum, I knew that I had come face to face with something beyond the realm of human understanding, something that defied rational explanation. And though I could not shake the feeling of icy fingers still lingering on my shoulder, I also knew that I had survived the encounter, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of unspeakable terror. Yet try as I might, I could not banish the memory of that chilling moment from my mind, the sensation of the phantom hand gripping my shoulder like a vice haunting me like a ghost. And though I tried to rationalize away the experience as a trick of the mind or a figment of my imagination, I could not escape the feeling that there was something lurking in the darkness of the abandoned asylum, something that defied explanation and defied reason. In the days that followed, I found myself haunted by nightmares of the abandoned asylum, its corridors twisting and turning like a maze of nightmares that threatened to consume me whole. And though I tried to push the memories aside and move on with my life, I knew that I could never truly escape the darkness that had taken root in my soul that fateful day. And so I resolved to confront my fears head on, to face the darkness that lurked within the abandoned asylum and reclaim my sense of peace and sanity. Armed with nothing but my courage and determination, I returned to the asylum once more, determined to uncover the truth behind the phantom hand that had gripped my shoulder in that moment of terror. As I stepped through the rusted gates and into the darkness beyond, I felt a sense of calm wash over me like a gentle breeze, as if the very walls of the asylum were welcoming me back into their embrace. And though the shadows still danced in the corners of my vision and the air was heavy with the weight of untold horrors, I knew that I was not alone, that I had the strength and resilience to face whatever lay ahead. With a newfound sense of purpose, I ventured deeper into the heart of the abandoned asylum, each step bringing me closer to the truth that lay hidden within its decaying walls. And though I knew that the journey ahead would not be easy, I also knew that I was ready to confront whatever darkness awaited me, to banish the specters that haunted my dreams and reclaim my sense of peace and sanity once and for all. Story 41 The moon cast an ethereal glow over the cobblestone streets of Saint. Augustine as I approached the supposedly haunted hotel that had captured my curiosity. Its Victorian facade loomed ominously against the night sky, its windows shrouded in darkness like the eyes of a silent sentinel guarding secrets untold. Despite the warnings of locals and the whispers of superstition that surrounded the hotel, I had booked a room for the night eager to uncover the truth behind its ghostly reputation. As I stepped through the creaking doors and into the dimly lit lobby, a chill ran down my spine, as if the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy. The receptionist greeted me with a polite smile, her eyes betraying a hint of unease as she handed me the key to my room. With a sense of trepidation, I made my way down the dimly lit hallway and unlocked the door to my accommodations for the night. As I stepped into the room, a shiver ran down my spine the air heavy with the weight of untold secrets that seemed to linger in the shadows. The furnishings were elegant yet antiquated, their faded grandeur a testament to the hotel's storied past. But it was the atmosphere that sent a chill down my spine, a palpable sense of foreboding that seemed to hang in the air like a thick fog. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease as I settled into bed, the soft glow of the moonlight filtering through the curtains casting eerie shadows across the room. Yet despite my best efforts to ignore the creeping sense of dread that gnawed at the edges of my consciousness, I found sleep elusive, my mind plagued by restless thoughts and haunting whispers that seemed to echo in the darkness. It was in the dead of night that I awoke to a sound that sent a jolt of fear coursing through my veins, a soft scraping noise that seemed to emanate from the walls themselves. With a trembling hand, I reached for the bedside lamp and flicked it on, 
the harsh light illuminating the room in a stark glare that banished the shadows to the corners. And there, carved into the walls of my room in jagged, uneven lines, were strange symbols that seemed to pulsate with an otherworldly energy. They twisted and writhed like living things, their presence a silent testament to the darkness that lurked within the hotel's walls. With a sense of mounting dread, I stumbled out of bed and approached the symbols, my fingers tracing their intricate patterns with a mixture of fascination and fear. I tried to rationalize their presence, to convince myself that they were nothing more than a trick of the light or a figment of my imagination. But deep down I knew that there was something more sinister at play, something that defied explanation and defied reason. As I stood in the dim light of the room, the symbols seemed to come alive before my eyes, their lines shimmering and shifting like snakes in the grass. And then without warning, they began to glow with an unearthly light, casting strange shadows across the walls that danced and flickered like specters in the night. With a sudden surge of terror, I stumbled backwards and fled from the room, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the deserted corridors like a desperate plea for salvation. I knew that I had to leave the haunted hotel behind, to escape the darkness that lurked within its walls before it consumed me whole. And though I tried to put the experience behind me and move on with my life, I could not shake the feeling that the symbols had left their mark upon me, that they had opened a door to a world of darkness and despair that I could never truly escape, or in the heart of Saint. Augustine's haunted hotel, I had glimpsed the true face of terror, and it was a sight that would haunt me for the rest of my days. Story 42 As the sun dipped below the horizon and cast a fiery glow over the vast expanse of the Everglades, I set out on a journey into the heart of darkness, eager to uncover the secrets that lay hidden within its murky depths. The air was thick with the scent of damp earth and rotting vegetation, a tangible reminder of the untamed wilderness that surrounded me on all sides. With each stroke of my paddle, the waters of the swamp churned and roiled beneath me, the sound of my progress echoing through the stillness of the night like a drumbeat of anticipation. Yet amidst the eerie silence that hung like a shroud over the swamp, I could sense a presence lurking just beyond the edges of my perception, a feeling of eyes watching me from the shadows. It was then that I stumbled upon a group of locals gathered by the murky waters of the swamp, their faces obscured by the darkness as they performed a mysterious ritual that sent shivers racing down my spine. Their voices rose and fell in a hypnotic cadence, their words a strange and ancient tongue that seemed to resonate with the very soul of the Everglades. With a sense of mounting dread, I watched from the safety of my kayak as the locals continued their macabre ceremony, their movements fluid and mesmerizing in the flickering light of the torches that illuminated the swamp. I tried to make sense of the ritual, to decipher its meaning and purpose, but the more I watched, the more I realized that it defied rational explanation. As the chanting reached a crescendo, a sense of malevolence washed over me like a tidal wave, threatening to drag me down into the depths of despair. I could feel the darkness closing in around me, its tendrils reaching out to ensnare me in their icy grasp. In a desperate bid for escape, I turned and fled from the scene, the sound of the chanting fading into the distance as I paddled deeper into the heart of the swamp. Yet try as I might, I could not shake the feeling that the echoes of the ritual would haunt me for the rest of my days, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked within the Everglades. And though I tried to put the experience behind me and move on with my life, I could not escape the feeling that I had glimpsed something ancient and primal in the heart of the swamp, something that defied explanation and defied reason. For in the mysteries of the Everglades I had come face to face with the true nature of the unknown and it was a sight that would haunt me for eternity. As I paddled deeper into the heart of the Everglades, the darkness seemed to close in around me like a suffocating cloak the tangled mangroves looming overhead like silent sentinels guarding the secrets of the swamp. The air was heavy with the scent of decay and the only sound was the soft splash of my paddle as it cut through the still waters. Despite the overwhelming sense of foreboding that hung in the air, I pressed on, driven by a curiosity that bordered on obsession. I had come to the Everglades in search of answers, and I would not rest until I had uncovered the truth behind the mysterious ritual I had witnessed. 
As the moon rose high in the sky, casting its pale light over the swamp, I stumbled upon a clearing bathed in its silvery glow. There, amidst the twisted roots and gnarled branches, I beheld a sight that sent shivers racing down my spine. A circle of stones had been arranged in the center of the clearing, their surfaces etched with strange symbols that seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy. In the center of the circle, a fire burned brightly, casting flickering shadows across the faces of the locals who had gathered there. With a sense of trepidation, I approached the circle, my heart pounding in my chest like a drumbeat of impending doom. The locals turned to face me, their eyes gleaming with an intensity that sent a chill down my spine. Who are you? One of them asked, their voice echoing through the stillness of the night like a whisper in the darkness. I, I'm just passing through, I stammered, my words faltering in the face of their unwavering gaze. But the locals seemed unfazed by my presence, their attention focused on the ritual that was unfolding before them. As I watched, they began to chant in unison, their voices rising and falling in a haunting melody that seemed to reverberate through the very air itself. With each passing moment, the sense of unease that had plagued me since entering the Everglades grew stronger, until it felt as though the darkness itself was closing in around me. I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end, and a cold sweat broke out on my brow as I struggled to make sense of what I was witnessing. And then, without warning, the ground beneath my feet began to tremble, and a deafening roar filled the air. I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest as the earth shook beneath me. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that I had stumbled upon something far more sinister than I had ever imagined. The locals were not performing a ritual to honor the spirits of the swamp, they were summoning something ancient and malevolent, something that should have remained buried deep beneath the murky waters. In a panic, I turned and fled from the clearing, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the night like a desperate plea for salvation. I knew that I had to escape the Everglades before it was too late, before the darkness consumed me whole. As I paddled furiously through the dark waters, the echoes of the ritual still ringing in my ears, I knew that I would never forget what I had witnessed in the heart of the swamp. And though I tried to put the experience behind me and move on with my life, I could not escape the feeling that the darkness that lurked within the Everglades would haunt me for the rest of my days. For in the mysteries of the swamp I had glimpsed something ancient and primal, something that defied explanation and defied reason. And though I had escaped with my life, I knew that I would never truly be free from the darkness that had taken root in my soul that fateful night in the Everglades. Story 43 The vast expanse of Lake Okeechobee stretched out before me like a shimmering mirror, its waters calm and serene in the light of the setting sun. As I cast my line into the depths, the stillness of the evening was broken only by the gentle lapping of waves against the hull of my boat and the occasional chirp of crickets from the nearby shore. Alone on the tranquil waters I relished the solitude, the stresses of everyday life melting away with each passing moment. But as the sun dipped below the horizon and cast a fiery glow over the lake, I felt a sense of unease begin to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness, as if the very air itself crackled with another worldly energy. It was then that I saw them, ripples in the water that seemed far too large to be caused by any fish native to the area. With a sense of mounting curiosity, I reeled in my line and peered over the edge of the boat, scanning the dark depths for any sign of movement. And then, with a sudden surge of terror, I saw it a massive shape lurking just beneath the surface, its form obscured by the murky waters of the lake. My heart pounded in my chest as I watched, transfixed, unable to tear my eyes away from the creature that prowled the depths. For a moment, the world seemed to hold its breath as the creature surfaced, its massive form breaking the surface of the water with a thunderous splash. In the fading light of the evening, I caught a glimpse of its sleek, scaled body and gleaming eyes, and I knew that I was face to face with something beyond my wildest imaginings. With a surge of adrenaline, I fumbled for my camera, desperate to capture proof of the creature's existence. But as I raised the lens to my eye, the creature vanished beneath the surface once more, leaving only ripples in its wake. In the days that followed, 
I could not shake the memory of the encounter from my mind, the image of the creature's massive form haunting my dreams like a specter in the night. And though I tried to convince myself that it was nothing more than a trick of the light or a figment of my imagination, I knew deep down that what I had witnessed on Lake Okeechobee was real. As I returned to the lake in search of answers, I found myself drawn deeper into the mystery that surrounded the creature's existence. I spoke with locals and scoured the archives for any mention of similar sightings, but the more I searched, the more elusive the truth became. And then, just when I had almost given up hope of ever uncovering the truth, I stumbled upon a clue that would change everything. A fisherman who had been on the lake that fateful evening came forward with a photograph he had taken of the creature, its massive form captured in stunning detail against the backdrop of the setting sun. With the evidence in hand, I knew that I could no longer deny the existence of the creature that prowled the depths of Lake Okeechobee. And though the mysteries of the lake still remain shrouded in darkness, I take solace in the knowledge that I was able to capture proof of its existence and share it with the world. For in the depths of Lake Okeechobee, I had glimpsed something beyond my wildest imaginings, something that defied explanation and defied reason. And though the creature may forever remain a mystery, I take comfort in the knowledge that I was able to bear witness to its existence and share my story with those who dared to believe. Story 44 The abandoned theme park in Orlando stood as a testament to a once thriving era, its towering roller coasters and whimsical attractions now mere skeletons of their former glory. As I passed through the rusted gates and into the heart of the deserted park, a wave of nostalgia washed over me, carrying with it memories of carefree days spent exploring its vibrant streets and indulging in its fantastical wonders. But as I ventured deeper into the abandoned park, the echoes of laughter and excitement that had once filled the air gave way to an eerie silence broken only by the creaking of decaying structures and the whisper of the wind through empty corridors. The once bustling streets now lay deserted, their faded facades a haunting reminder of the passage of time. It was amidst this desolate landscape that I stumbled upon the funhouse, its weathered exterior standing like a sentinel against the encroaching darkness. With a mixture of curiosity and trepidation, I pushed open the creaking doors and stepped into the dimly lit interior the musty scent of decay filling my nostrils as I crossed the threshold. Inside, the air was heavy with the weight of forgotten memories, the corridors twisting and turning like a labyrinth of shadows and secrets. The floorboards groaned beneath my weight as I made my way deeper into the heart of the funhouse, my footsteps echoing off the walls like whispers in the darkness. As I reached the center of the funhouse, I was met with a sight that sent a chill down my spine, the distorted laughter of children echoing through the empty halls, their voices tinged with a sense of unease that sent shivers racing down my spine. With each step I took, the laughter grew louder and more insistent, as if beckoning me further into the depths of the abandoned attraction. Despite the growing sense of dread that gnawed at the edges of my consciousness, I pressed on driven by a curiosity that bordered on obsession. I had come to the abandoned funhouse in search of answers, and I would not rest until I had uncovered the truth behind its haunting echoes. As I ventured deeper into the heart of the funhouse, the corridors seemed to twist and warp around me, their distorted reflections casting strange shadows across the walls. The air grew thick with a palpable sense of malevolence, as if the very fabric of reality itself was unraveling before my eyes. And then, just when I thought I could go no further, I stumbled upon a room bathed in an eerie light, its walls adorned with faded murals of clowns and carnival rides. In the center of the room stood a carousel, its once colorful horses now frozen in time, their painted eyes staring out into the darkness with an unsettling intensity. As I approached the carousel, the laughter grew louder and more manic, its echoes reverberating through the empty halls like a chorus of madness. With each passing moment, the sense of unease that gripped me grew stronger, until it felt as though the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy. With a surge of adrenaline, I turned and fled from the room, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the deserted corridors like a desperate plea for salvation. And though I emerged from the darkness shaken and terrified, I knew that I had glimpsed something beyond my wildest imaginings, something that defied explanation and defied, defied reason. 
for in the abandoned funhouse of Orlando, I had witnessed the true face of terror, and it was a sight that would haunt me for the rest of my days. And though I tried to put the experience behind me and move on with my life, I knew that I could never truly escape the echoes of laughter that lingered in the darkness, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked within the abandoned theme park. Story 45 The Apalachicola National Forest stretched out before me like a living, breathing entity, its vast expanse of towering pines and dense undergrowth seemingly endless. As I ventured deeper into its heart, a sense of reverence washed over me, mingling with the awe-inspiring beauty of the natural world surrounding me. The tranquility of the forest enveloped me like a warm embrace, offering solace and peace amidst the chaos of everyday life. Setting up camp beneath the canopy of trees, I felt a profound connection to the wilderness, a feeling of being one with nature that filled me with a sense of contentment. The soft rustle of leaves in the breeze and the distant chirping of crickets lulled me into a state of relaxation, easing the tension that had been building within me for weeks. But as night descended upon the forest and darkness swallowed the landscape, a subtle shift occurred a shift in the atmosphere, in the very essence of the woods themselves. The once familiar sounds of the forest took on a sinister edge, the rustling of leaves and the hooting of owls echoing through the stillness like ominous whispers in the night. Cocooned within the confines of my tent, I tried to shake off the sense of unease that settled over me like a heavy blanket, but no matter how hard I tried to push the thoughts from my mind, they lingered, festering in the shadows of my consciousness like a dark secret waiting to be revealed. As I lay beneath the covers, the feeling of being watched intensified, as if unseen eyes were peering out from the darkness, studying me with a gaze that pierced through the veil of night. With a shiver, I zipped open the tent and stepped out into the cool night air, my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the forest for any sign of movement. And then I saw them the symbols carved into the trees surrounding my campsite, their jagged lines and intricate patterns glowing faintly in the moonlight. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that I was not alone in the forest, that there was something lurking in the shadows, waiting to reveal itself. Approaching the symbols cautiously, I felt a sense of unease wash over me, a primal fear that gnawed at the edges of my consciousness. They seemed ancient, their origins shrouded in mystery, and yet there was something undeniably sinister about them, something that sent shivers racing down my spine. As I traced the intricate patterns with my fingers, a sudden realization struck me a realization that filled me with a sense of dread unlike anything I had ever experienced before. These symbols were not merely random carvings etched into the bark of trees, they were a warning, a message from the forest itself, a message that spoke of ancient secrets and untold dangers lurking within its depths. With a sense of mounting dread, I stumbled back into my tent and huddled beneath the covers, the symbols looming in my mind like a specter from a nightmare. As I lay there in the darkness, I couldn't shake the feeling that the forest was alive with unseen forces, its ancient trees whispering secrets that were not meant for mortal ears. In the days that followed, I tried to put the incident behind me, to convince myself that it had been nothing more than a trick of the light or a figment of my imagination. But deep down, I knew that there was something more at play, something that defied rational explanation. As I packed up my belongings and prepared to leave the Apalachicola National Forest behind, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was leaving something behind that I was abandoning a mystery that begged to be solved. And though I tried to put the symbols out of my mind and move on with my life, I knew that they would haunt me for the rest of my days, a chilling reminder of the enigma that lurked within the depths of the forest. Story 46 Key West, with its narrow streets and colorful buildings, was a treasure trove of history, a living museum that bore witness to the passage of time. As I stepped onto its cobblestone streets, I couldn't help but feel a sense of reverence for the bygone era that had left its mark on every corner of the island. But it was the old cemetery that held a particular fascination for me, its weathered tombstones and crumbling mausoleums standing as silent sentinels against the relentless march of time. As I wandered through the labyrinth of graves, the air heavy with the scent of salt and decay, I felt a deep connection to the souls that lay beneath the earth, their stories waiting to be discovered amidst the silence of the graveyard. 
Each tombstone told a story, a tale of love and loss, of triumph and tragedy, and as I passed by each one, I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the lives that had once been lived. The inscriptions were faded with age, the names and dates barely legible, but the echoes of the past lingered in the air, whispering secrets that had been long forgotten. But as I wandered deeper into the heart of the cemetery, a sense of unease began to gnaw at the edges of my consciousness. The shadows seemed to grow darker, and the silence that enveloped the graveyard was broken only by the distant lapping of waves against the shore. It was as if the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy, as if the spirits of the departed were stirring restlessly in their graves. And then, as I passed by a particularly ancient tombstone, I felt it a cold hand brushing against mine, sending a shiver down my spine. With a gasp, I stumbled backwards, my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the darkness for any sign of movement. But there was nothing there, save for the silent rows of graves and the whisper of the wind through the trees. With a sense of mounting dread, I realized that I was not alone in the cemetery, that there was something lurking in the shadows waiting to reveal itself. As I made my way through the maze of tombstones, the feeling of being watched only grew stronger as if unseen eyes were following my every move. With each step I took, the sense of unease that gripped me tightened its grip, until it felt as though the very air itself was closing in around me. And then, just when I thought I could go no further, I stumbled upon a mausoleum bathed in an eerie light, its door hanging open on rusted hinges. With a sense of trepidation, I stepped inside, the air heavy with the scent of decay and the sound of my footsteps echoing off the walls like whispers in the darkness. As I explored the dimly lit interior of the mausoleum, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being drawn further into the heart of darkness, that there was something waiting for me just beyond the threshold of my understanding. And as I reached out to touch the cold stone walls, I felt a chill run down my spine as if the very walls themselves held some dark secret that was not meant to be uncovered. With a sense of mounting dread, I turned and fled from the mausoleum, the sound of my footsteps echoing through the silent cemetery like a desperate plea for salvation. And though I emerged from the darkness shaken and terrified, I knew that I had witnessed something beyond my wildest imaginings, something that defied explanation and defied a reason. For in the old cemetery of Key West, I had glimpsed the true face of terror, and it was a sight that would haunt me for the rest of my days. And though I tried to put the experience behind me and move on with my life, I knew that I could never truly escape the cold touch of the hand that had brushed against mine in the darkness, a chilling reminder of the horrors that lurked within the silent rows of graves. Story 47 Driving through the back roads of the Panhandle was always an adventure especially during the golden hours of dusk when the sun cast long shadows over the landscape, painting the world in hues of amber and gold. The winding roads snaked through dense forests, where ancient trees whispered secrets to the wind and the air was thick with the scent of pine and earth. It was a landscape of untamed beauty, where every twist and turn held the promise of discovery. As I guided my car along the narrow lanes, the rhythmic hum of the engine providing a comforting backdrop to the symphony of nature outside, I couldn't help but feel a sense of exhilaration. There was something liberating about being on the open road, far from the noise and chaos of the city, with nothing but the vast expanse of wilderness stretching out before me. But as I rounded a bend in the road, my headlights cutting through the gathering darkness, I saw something that made my blood run cold a figure standing at the side of the road, bathed in an eerie, ethereal glow. My foot instinctively pressed down on the brake pedal, bringing the car to a halt with a screech of tires against asphalt. The hitchhikers stood motionless, their silhouette illuminated by the soft glow of my headlights. Their features were obscured by the darkness, but their eyes gleamed with an intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. There was something undeniably otherworldly about them, something that defied explanation and sent a chill creeping up my spine. For a moment I hesitated, unsure of what to do. But then, a sense of unease settled over me like a heavy cloak, and I knew that I couldn't just drive on without offering assistance. With trembling hands I reached for the window switch and rolled it down, the cool night air rushing in to fill the car. Hey, are you okay? I called out, 
my voice sounding strangely hollow in the silence of the night. The hitchhiker didn't respond, their eyes fixed on some point in the distance with an unblinking intensity that sent a shiver down my spine. It was as if they were looking right through me, seeing something that lay beyond the veil of reality. Feeling a knot of fear tightening in my chest, I tried again. Do you need a ride? Still, there was no response. And then, just as suddenly as they had appeared, the hitchhiker vanished into thin air, leaving behind nothing but the echo of their footsteps on the asphalt. I sat there for a moment, my heart pounding in my chest, trying to make sense of what had just happened. But the more I thought about it, the less sense it made. How could someone just disappear like that? Shaken by the encounter, I put the car back into gear and continued on my journey. The image of the hitchhiker burned into my mind like a brand. The road stretched out before me, dark and empty, the only sound the steady thrum of the engine and the whisper of the wind through the trees. But despite my best efforts to shake off the feeling of unease that lingered in the air, I couldn't help but feel that I was being watched. It was as if the hitchhiker's otherworldly gaze still followed me, watching from the shadows with eyes that glowed like embers in the night. And as I drove deeper into the darkness, the feeling only grew stronger, until it felt as though the very air itself was closing in around me. I tried to focus on the road ahead, to push aside the fear that threatened to consume me, but it was no use. In the end, all I could do was drive on, hoping that I would eventually leave the encounter behind me and find solace in the safety of home. But deep down, I knew that the memory of that eerie encounter would haunt me for the rest of my days a chilling reminder of the mysteries that lurked just beyond the edges of perception. Story 48 Staying overnight in a remote cabin in the swamps near Lake Placid was an adventure in solitude and nature, offering a retreat from the hustle and bustle of everyday life. The tranquility of the swamp enveloped me as I settled into the rustic comforts of the cabin, the crackling fire casting dancing shadows across the walls, Outside, the symphony of nocturnal creatures filled the air, their calls mingling with the gentle rustle of the wind through the trees. As I nestled into the warmth of my surroundings, I felt a sense of peace wash over me, the cares of the world melting away with each passing moment. The cabin felt like a sanctuary, a place where I could escape from the noise and chaos of the outside world and reconnect with the natural rhythms of the earth. But as the night wore on, and the fire burned low. A strange sound shattered the tranquility of scratching at the door, like claws against wood. My heart skipped a beat as I froze in place, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as I listened intently for any sign of movement. The scratching persisted, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment, sending a shiver down my spine. With trembling hands, I approached the door, my pulse pounding in my ears as I hesitated to confront whatever lurked on the other side. Summoning every ounce of courage I possessed, I reached for the door handle and slowly swung it open, the hinges groaning in protest. The night air rushed in, cool and damp, as I peered into the darkness beyond. At first, all I saw was the inky blackness of the swamp, the shadows swirling and shifting in the faint light of the moon. But then, as my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I saw the muddy handprints smeared across the wood of the door their distorted shapes a chilling testament to the presence of something sinister. A cold knot of fear tightened in my chest as I stared at the handprints, my mind racing with a thousand questions. Who or what had left them there, and what did they want with me? As I retreated back into the safety of the cabin, the sense of unease that gripped me tightened its grip, the shadow seeming to press in closer with each passing moment. I could feel eyes watching me from the darkness their gaze filled with an otherworldly intensity that sent shivers racing down my spine. With a trembling hand, I stoked the dying embers of the fire, the flames casting long shadows across the walls of the cabin. But no matter how brightly the fire burned, I couldn't shake the feeling that something malevolent lurked just beyond the cabin walls, waiting to reveal itself in the dead of night. As I huddled beneath the covers, the darkness seemed to close in around me, suffocating me in its embrace. 
and though I tried to convince myself that it was all just my imagination running wild, I knew deep down that the handprints on the door were all too real a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of perception. Story 49 The boat tour through the mangroves of the 10,000 islands was a journey into the heart of Florida's untamed wilderness, a place where the line between the natural and the supernatural often blurred. As our vessel glided through the winding waterways, flanked by towering mangrove trees that seemed to reach towards the sky, I couldn't help but feel a sense of awe at the sheer beauty and power of the Everglades ecosystem. The sun hung low on the horizon, casting long shadows across the water as we ventured deeper into the labyrinth of mangroves. With each passing moment, the sense of wonder that filled me was tinged with a growing unease, as if the very air itself crackled with an otherworldly energy. It was a feeling that I couldn't shake, as if unseen eyes were watching our every move from the shadows. As we continued our journey, the sounds of the swamp surrounded us the chirping of crickets, the croaking of frogs, the rustling of leaves in the breeze. But beneath the cacophony of natural sounds, there was something else, something sinister and unsettling that seemed to lurk just beyond the edges of perception. And then, just as suddenly as it had begun, the engine sputtered and died, leaving us adrift in the middle of the mangroves. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that we were alone, miles from civilization and at the mercy of the swamp. As we sat in silence, the darkness pressing in around us, I couldn't shake the feeling that we were being watched. And then, just beneath the surface of the water, I caught glimpses of strange, humanoid figures, their eyes glowing like embers in the night. It was a sight that sent shivers racing down my spine, a chilling reminder that we were not alone in the mangroves. With each passing moment, the sense of unease that gripped me tightened its grip, until it felt as though the very air itself was closing in around us. And as we sat in silence, adrift in the darkness, I couldn't shake the feeling that the mangroves held secrets that were not meant for mortal ears. It was a feeling that would haunt me for the rest of my days, a reminder of the darkness that lurked just beyond the edges of perception in the wilds of Florida. And though I tried to put the experience behind me and return to the safety of civilization, I knew that I could never truly escape the secrets of the mangroves, nor the sense of unease that they had awakened within me. Story 50 The Florida Everglades stretched out before me like an endless sea of tangled greenery, ominous and foreboding as the sun began its descent beneath the horizon. I had always been drawn to the mysteries of this untamed wilderness, but little did I know that my journey into its depths would lead me to an encounter that would forever haunt my dreams. With a heavy pack slung over my shoulders and a sense of both excitement and trepidation coursing through my veins, I set out on my solo camping trip into the heart of the Everglades. The air was thick with humidity, and the chorus of nocturnal creatures seemed to rise with each step I took deeper into the swamp. As the light dwindled, I found myself enveloped by the dense foliage, the twisted branches of cypress trees reaching out like skeletal fingers grasping for my soul. With each rustle of the underbrush and every echoing call of an unseen bird, my nerves frayed a little more, and I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Finally, I stumbled upon a small clearing barely large enough to accommodate my tent amidst the towering trees. With shaky hands, I set up camp the metallic clang of tent stakes echoing through the stillness of the night. As darkness descended like a heavy blanket, I huddled close to the feeble warmth of my campfire, its flickering flames casting eerie shadows that danced along the edges of my vision. That's when I heard it a low, guttural growl that seemed to reverberate through the very ground beneath me. My heart leapt into my throat, and I froze my breath catching in my chest as I strained to listen for any sign of movement in the darkness beyond the reach of my firelight. Suddenly, something crashed through the underbrush with a deafening cacophony, sending me scrambling for my flashlight. With trembling hands, I fumbled for the switch, the beam of light cutting through the inky blackness like a beacon of hope in the night. And then I saw them a pair of glowing eyes, like twin orbs of fire, staring back at me from the shadows. My blood ran cold as I realized what I was facing a Florida panther, sleek and powerful, its muscles coiled like springs, ready to strike at a moment's notice. I held my breath, 
hardly daring to move as the panther prowled around the perimeter of my campsite, its gaze never wavering from my own. Time seemed to stand still as I stared into those unblinking eyes, feeling the weight of centuries of primal instinct bearing down upon me. For hours, I remained huddled in my tent, every nerve on edge, as the panther circled ever closer, its presence a silent menace lurking just beyond the reach of my feeble defenses. The night stretched on interminably, each minute feeling like an eternity as I waited for the first light of dawn to banish the shadows and release me from the grip of this living nightmare. When morning finally came, I emerged from my shelter, my limbs stiff and aching from the long hours spent in fearful anticipation. But to my relief, the panther was gone, vanished into the depths of the Everglades without a trace. As I packed up my camp and began the long trek back to civilization, I couldn't shake the feeling that I had glimpsed something primal and ancient that night, something that lurked just beneath the surface of the wild beauty of the Florida Everglades, waiting to ensnare the unwary in its grasp. And though I had escaped with my life, I knew that I would never truly be free from the memory of that chilling encounter in the heart of the swamp.